From a cold, windy Cleveland Stadium, today the Browns play their final home game of the year and hope to snap an eight-game losing skid against an Atlanta Falcon team that has lost six in a row. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler along with Dan Jiggetts, and welcome to Balmy Cleveland, where today it's the Browns and the Falcons, and Dan, a team that has two wins against one that has only three, but they seem like they're in very different situations right now. Well, they really are, Brad. You look at Cleveland. They know that their coaching staff is not going to be back. Everybody on the team knows that. So what do they have to do to win today? Well, you play for pride, number one. You want to win the football game, but also you got to understand this. They have to have a running back to go for over 100 yards. They haven't had that in two years. The other thing that they have to do is they have to stop Atlanta from running the ball. Last week they couldn't stop Cleveland with, a, I mean, excuse me, uh, Houston with a similar kind of offense. That's right. The Falcons a couple of weeks ago against Tampa Bay had a great day on the ground. It could help to set up the pass, but they have their second game now with Scott Campbell at quarterback in for the injured Chris Miller, and Scott will admit he didn't have a good one last week. He certainly didn't, but you have the feeling now that he's now more relaxed and he can look at the game from a different perspective, that of being the starting quarterback. But really, this game comes down to this. It's late in the season. Both of these teams are struggling to win ball games. The question is, who has the stamps? That is, who's going to mail it in? As you see, 37 degrees, the wind whipping around Cleveland Stadium, and Wagner will kick it away. Deion Sanders deep for Atlanta at the four has trouble with it and will go down at the ten. So a great way to start for Cleveland and the Falcons and Scott Campbell will start in a bit of a hole. Scott Campbell out of Purdue. There's his numbers as the Falcons starting quarterback and last week three interceptions the offense with Scott Campbell across the front wall. Mike Kim, Houston Hoover, Jamie Dukes, Bill Froelich, Chris Hinton, and Gary Wilkins is a tight end. That's a pretty good offensive front, Brett. Rozier and Jones in the backfield. Andre Risen, the number two receiver in the NFL, and Michael Haynes at the wideout spots. And the Falcons will go to the ground game on their first play of the afternoon to pick up a four. And there's the Cleveland defense Atlanta's offense will look at. Burnett Gibson is a change in there. Michael Dean Perry and Pleasant. Matthews, Johnson, and Grayson, the linebacking core. Cleveland secondary Frank Minifield making a start after three weeks out with a bad heel Raymond Claiborne Felix Wright and Thane Gash are the safeties second, down five. second and five for Atlanta and the Falcons for the first time in their red gun set but they keep it on the ground maybe a yard for Rozier that's it Gibson in on the stop from his left tackle position. And the key for Gibson was the way he came off the block. He played it up real solid on the line of scrimmage and bounced right down and made the stop. So the Falcons have a third down situation. They're 37% on the season. Third down efficiency. And just inside their own 16-yard line. Again, the four wideout set with Rozier, the single setback. Rising in motion. Campbell, his first throw, complete, and it's going to be close to the first down as George Thomas tiptoed out of bounds. It appeared right at the point of the first down marker. I think he got it. Two receivers were stacked almost there together, uh, Thomas and Risen, and Risen got a good shot that time from the secondary of uh, Cleveland. Watch this as Andre Risen comes out on the pattern. He's up above Thomas as they come out, both coming out on the same kind of route, but he just got jammed, and Thomas was the guy open underneath. Scott Campbell taking the, sh the short stuff early on, trying to get comfortable in there, just let the air out a little bit. I was just going to say, you know, only about a five-yard pickup, but that's got to help the cause for him that he starts out one for one. Falcons first down. Thomas in motion. Campbell rolls left this time. Fades one out, incomplete intended for Ryzen. Covered by Stephen Braggs in the secondary. One of the guys who's been playing so well for Cleveland up front is Michael Dean Perry, number 92. Now, he's going on a loop up top. You see him, 92, working out. He recognizes now that he's got Campbell outside, and he gets up in his face, and that's really what made Scott adjust that pass a little bit. He wanted to throw it earlier. Michael Dean with nine sacks on the season, which is a career high for him. And, of course, he was, in many people's mind, and a lot of Holster's opinion, the number one defensive player in the AFC a season ago. Second and 10, Atlanta. Just underway here at Cleveland Stadium, no score. Sprint draw to Rozier. 
only about two. Michael Dean Perry is there. So is Tom Gibson. Last week, Cleveland had so many problems against Houston with the sprint draw. The same kind of play that uh, they were just really bombed out of the game with. This time, Michael Dean fighting against Bill Fraley gets over and gets in the fray along with some of his uh, help from his linebackers. But he's really the guy that gets in there and prevents Rozier from getting downfield. They're not going to let that draw play get to him today, Third apparently. Down Third down and long this time for Atlanta. They converted last time. It's third and eight here as they have trips to the top of your screen. Three wideouts and rising more than likely will be the motion man. They'll go straight from the red gun. And Campbell in and out of the hands of Collins and a flag flies in. Flags on the far side of the field. Dick Hantak, our referee, pass interference against Atlanta. Maybe on Sean Collins, the man that was the intended receiver, trying to get open over there. That's right, because he was working against Raymond Claiborne first. Pass interference, offense, number 89. Penley is declined, fourth down. They call it on George Thomas, who was the wide out on that side of the field. And so Scott Fulhag will have to kick it away for Atlanta. Brian Brennan back for Cleveland. Keeping those hands warm as long as he can. <laughs> Bad kick. Sounded like he kicked a rock. Brennan from the 33. Nifty move to about the 42 yard line. A nine yard return. 12.05 to go first quarter. No score here in Cleveland. Jerry Glanville in his first season has had man of the Falcons. Off to a 3 and 10 start. They had a. Opened up the season well. And then things have slid on them six straight losses Jim Schaffner on the other side the interim head coach of the Browns he's made it clear he does not want to come back in a coaching capacity but rather in the front office yeah he'll move up to the front office and help in the personnel area apparently and uh, the Browns will have a new coach next year who it will be we'll get into a little bit later on on the speculation that's going on around the league early Kozar brings up his offense with good field position Browns with their own 42 yard line play fake going deep and overshot Webster Slaughter. So the Browns open it up on play number one, but it's incomplete in second and ten. Deion Sanders was covering. The Browns with Farron, Tam, Bab, Rakozi, Jones, and Ozzie Newsom in what we feel will be his final game here at Cleveland Stadium. Metcalf and Mack in the backfield with Webster Slaughter, the intended receiver on that last pass play, and Reggie Langhorn, the wideouts for number 19, Bernie Kozar. And as the season has gone Rough, uh, roughly for Cleveland. Same story for Bernie and his numbers. They've got to give him some time to throw the football. That's been one of the key problems. Kevin Mack, the single setback on second and ten. Kevin gets the call straight ahead. Kevin Mack got about six. It'll bring up third down at four. Darian Connor and Ken Tippins in on the stop. There's the front three for the Falcons. Gann, Epps, and Tim Green. The linebacking core. Lyles and Tuggle. John Rady and Darian Connor who just made the last stop. And the secondary for the Falcons with Bobby Butler and Deion Sanders on the corners. And Brian Jordan and Scott Case the safeties. Third down at four for the Browns. Metcalf in a slot as an extra receiver so it's a four wide out look for Bernie Kozar. Scott Case is offside and Kozar throws and Metcalf caught it but they had whistled it dead. Good play by Kozar in that he thought he had a free one there Dan. Yeah, he did and the reason why he had the free one he used the hard count drew him off and, and that's what that happened is uh, Atlanta had nine ten guys up on the line at scrimmage Bernie uses the hard count and pulls him offside. Encroachment, defense, five yard penalty, first down. But because the whistle blew, the play was blown dead, and that's the reason why the pass wasn't a complete one to Metcalf. So tack on some more yardage to what Atlanta has the fourth most penalized team in football. Last week they had over 100 yards in penalties. This one cost them a first down, and the Browns move into Atlanta territory at the 47. Ozzie Newsom. Motion now sets up. And 
again, the Falcons show blitz. Pitch to Boy, Boys, he met head on at the 44 yard line by Brian Jordan. Well, I tell you one thing that we know about Brian Jordan is he brings a load when he comes up front, too. Watch him come up on this one and just simply stop Eric Metcalf in his tracks. He almost knocks him back into Lake Erie. <laughs> Eric's coming in a little high right there. Boy, he just got right in his chest. Form tackle. Brian Jordan, the man Jerry Glanville calls baseball because he does play double-A baseball in the St. Louis Cardinals organization. He just got a triple, too. He sure did. Side, broke a tackle. He's going to be close to the first down. Looks like he might be a yard shy. Barnett and Jordan in on the stop. Kevin Mack has been having a, a pretty good season for the Cleveland Browns. You always look for the bright spots in what has been a tough season for these Browns, and he certainly is one. Uh, he's rushed for about uh, coming up on 500 yards, but that really doesn't tell the story because the Browns have been there behind so much this season that they've had to go away from their running game, but he's had a pretty good one. We asked Burley Kozar the other day, name a bright spot, Burley. And Kevin Mack's name was out in a hurry. And there are his numbers on the season. And he was calling another player on the field. At that time, the Browns only had uh, 10 guys on the field. They still have eight seconds to get this playoff. And with two seconds to go on the clock, they get it off. Kozar on the play fake. Now he's going to run with it. And Rady there to meet him as he hook slides at the 35. Good enough for the first down. Leroy Horde, number 33, was the guy who was late getting on the field. Now, what happens then is all of a sudden you have to rush the play. Bernie Kozar looks downfield, gets a little bit of pressure from his right side, and just decides to tuck it in and run. Good protection, though, by his offensive line early on. It broke down a little late, but Bernie does a smart thing and avoids John Rady trying to put that shoulder on it. Tell you what, Bernie's not going to run often, is he? That's for sure. In fact, there's how many times on the season. <laughs> so I call a smart quarterback. First down. <laughs> He got it for the Browns at the Atlanta 34. Metcalf in motion. Blitz by Atlanta. Kozar got rid of it incomplete. One hopped it intended for Kevin Mack over the middle, but Atlanta got some pressure on him that time. Well, that's typical of what the Browns' problem is, Brad. The corners are soft. In order to, if you want to roll out, if you want to set up in the, in the pocket, anything like that, your tackles have to be strong, and they have to stop that outside rush. And so far this season, the Browns' tackles have had a very difficult time doing that, both Jones and Farron. Farron 74 and Jones 66. Second and 10 with 8.39 to go first quarter, no score. The Browns in Atlanta territory. Metcalf again split out. To the bottom of your screen is a wide receiver. Ozark changes things up with appears at the line. That one tipped at the line. Knocked down, I think, by Oliver Barnett. And that happens at times. Well, against the Browns, I think that's 15 times Bernie's had him batted down at the line of scrimmage he, this year. It, it makes it tough. Even though he's 6'5", 6'6", six, six, he's still a sidearm passer, so the ball is coming out a little bit lower. And if you time it right, and especially if you don't get off the line of scrimmage and get a decent pass rush, then it's the best place to be to try to knock it down. Well, the Browns are going to have to earn this one. They've got 10 yards to go on third down. Four wide outs is Brennan and Metcalf are in with Langhorn and Slaughter. They'll work from the shotgun. Mark! 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 Those are with time. Slaughter there. And the Browns with a first down inside the Atlanta 25. Pick up of 12. Deion Sanders was covering. It's interesting to see. Now watch uh, Webster Slaughter. He's going to go in motion and head up in the slot. He's working against Deion Sanders, man to man. Deion normally is not the guy that someone will try to pass against, but he gets beaten now because he jumped inside. Webster Slaughter comes back outside on the break and makes the reception. So the Browns started this drive of their own 42, and they've moved it down to the Atlanta 23. Metcalf comes to the near side. Here comes the blitz. Ozzie Newsom has the grab to the 20. Kozar read that one nicely, Dan. Sure did. Just dumped it right off right now. One step back and just popped it to probably a guy who's going to, I think his next stop is going to be Canton after being here in Cleveland. That's Ozzie Newsom. No doubt about that. Leading. He'll move about, uh, what, an hour up the road to Canton. That's it. 
What a great career. It's a, almost a shame that there's not 80,000 people here for his last home game as a uh, Cleveland Brown. Second Has missed a game seven. since, what, 10th grade? Yeah. Something like that? <laughs> it's a long time. Ninth play of the drive for the Browns. Second and seven. The Atlanta 20. Slaughter. In motion. Bernie looks that way. And goes in and out of his hands. Incomplete. Bobby Butler with nice coverage for Atlanta. You know, you think about what the Atlanta Falcons are doing, and they're a team that's still kind of searching for some identity, Brad. And, and I think you, the way you find that is you, you try to get some people out there in the field with you that, you know, you feel like they want to win. They want to go after it. And they understand how to win, not making foolish penalties. And that's what's been killing the Falcons all year long, mistakes, small mistakes, that end up mounting up and you know, losing ball games. They sure have. It seems like a handful of game every week mm -hmm. of those mistakes that have really killed them and produced the 3 and 10. Third and seven for the Brown. Falcons back off the blitz. Kozar with time. Deep for Langhorn. Just overshot it. Bobby Butler back there. Langhorn had a play on the ball, but just a little bit too far in front. And the dangerous thing for the Falcons is that uh, Bernie Kozar is getting plenty of time today. We've got an official down on the field, folks. That's how tough this game is today. Now, I'm not sure which one that is. I can't see it. What his number is? Might be Gordon Wells, our umpire. I'd yeah, it sure looks like Gordon. Yes, but uh -huh. he got in the mix there. You know, when those receivers start crossing back there with linebackers and all that, those are the only guys out there without shoulder pads on. It, it is, is uh, Gordon Wells. So we've got an official timeout. And you can say that for more than one reason here. <laughs> On the left side of your screen, you're going to see Gordon right there get popped. Best block that Brian Brennan's thrown all year. Yeah, you see the hat went one way, Gordon went the other way, but uh, they'll pump him back up a little bit more. You see he's got the mic. He was the guy with the mic, so we can't lose him. He's our communicator, <laughs> or at least can talk to our communicator. <laughs> I bet they got an earful in the replay booth look, right look there. Look at old Gordon. They? If you straighten out those legs, he'd be about 6'5". <laughs> you can tell he's been used to the gridiron. Jerry Corrick, who... Has had the flu all week and told us before the game he's lost about six pounds. He'd make weight if he was a wrestler, but he's got his first field goal attempt of the day upcoming. And he didn't even get to have a delicious shake. Ooh. <laughs> 37 yard field goal attempt. Mike Pagel to hold. Torix kick. And hit the upright. The Browns fail to score. No score. 6.48 to go first quarter. Back at Cleveland Stadium, no score here in the first quarter. And, uh, Dan, you know, we talked to Andre Risen the other day. He said maybe the first team to score is a win this thing. Yeah, and you're kind of getting the point now. You wonder if anybody really wants to score. But so far, you know, Cleveland drove down but missed the field goal opportunity. Now it's the Falcons' chance to take the ball back down. Number one, they've got to burn some time off the clock. That's the essential thing. And I think the way to do that against this Cleveland defense is to run the ball. Well, the Fal the uh, Browns, I should say, had the ball for 5 minutes, 17 seconds, drove 38 yards, and came up empty on the missed field goal. So now Atlanta takes over. First and ten at its own 20-yard line. Keith Jones got almost six yards. Tough work inside. Clay Matthews in on the stop. Keith Jones. Nice key block up front that time by Bill Fraley. He got up under uh, Tony Gibson, number 71, lifted him up off the ground and took him back about three, three or four yards. We mentioned that offensive line before. Jamie Dukes up in the center position and Hoover and Freilich at the guards, Hinton and Ken at the tackles. That's a pretty good offensive line to run again, to run behind or to throw behind. Or Scott Campbell maybe to hide behind, one of the shorter quarterbacks in the league. <laughs> Second and five. Jones again. And he backs his way to the 29-yard line, where it'll be third down and a yard. Mike Johnson in on the stop. See, this is the kind of game with the weather being the way that it is that offensive linemen and defensive linemen just simply love. Now, let's watch number 92. That's uh, that's Michael Dean Perry right there. Let's see what he does. He's coming around on a stunt. He runs into Chris Hinton, but those guys are teeing off now for that uh, offensive line of Atlanta, starting to move people out and get them off the line of scrimmage. Keith Jones has picked up nine yards 
on this possession for Atlanta and they've got third down and a long yard to go. Tracy Johnson and there's a single setback now he's got the run and the first down for Atlanta. And let's get an update on the Vikings and the Bucks. Greg Gumbel in New York Greg. All right, Brad, take a look at the longest run for a touchdown by a Tampa Bay quarterback in Bucks history. Vinny Testaverde pulls it down and takes off down the field. Watch the block he gets from Mark Carrier right about there. 48 yards, Testaverde and the Bucks on top. 7-0 first quarter, Brad. I know Floyd Peters is going to have some nice things to say to his Viking defense on the sideline after that one. That looked like one of those blocks at the 49ers and Randy Cross used to throw. <laughs> one of those cheap blocks, you mean. <laughs> Go low. Falcons first down. The sprint draw. Rozier, and he's dropped in his tracks for a loss by Mike Johnson. Big hit by the inside linebacker out of Virginia Tech. One of the things that the Browns did last week with the two inside linebackers, they were dropping off the ball a little bit more. This week, you see him playing up a little bit snugger along the line of scrimmage, and Johnson just steps in and gets some help late from Clay Matthews. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Matthews didn't get in on that one. Second down. Mike Johnson had that same flu that Corrick had, only had it earlier in the week. Didn't look like he was sick there. Dropped the Falcon running back for a loss of one at second and 11. Here's the Falcons' red gun for wide receiver offense. Campbell, high and long, intended for George Thomas. Tony Blaylock was covering. It's a tough ball to throw when you're going to that out, but uh, this time Scott Campbell just simply sails it over George's head. Doesn't step into it. You kind of he's kind of relaxed when he throws it. You see him just stepping up in there and not really punching the ball. And you got to punch it out there, especially on the out pass. Scott Campbell was so confident going into his first start last week and then had a horrendous game, and he was really torn up about it in the locker room after the game last week. He thought he'd be better today, but he tried to aim that one a little bit as he did last week. Third and eleven. He got something on this one, but it also was tipped by Clay Matthews. And we have flags down. I tell you one thing, the, the big guys up front that time for Cleveland were having some fun. They're running around, look like a schoolyard thing down there, they running all those loops fun. and stunts. <laughs> too much fun. Somebody's in the neutral zone, offside against the Browns. So. Offsides, defense number 26, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, repeat the down, third down. Ray Claiborne's been around forever. He's supposed to know better. Yeah, and what is a cornerback doing up in the neutral zone, too, you know? It's not like they're going to hit anybody out there. 14 years out of Texas for the three time All Pro when he was with the Patriots. He's had some great years with the Patriots and really kind of finishing out his career here. Although he says he wants to continue playing, the big question is whether or not it'll be with the Browns next year. Well, that helps the Falcons to the two to five yards, but it's still third and six. Rise with the motion. Campbell on the run. Got it complete to Haynes. First down Atlanta at the 47. So the second chance is the key there for the Falcons, and they pick up the first down. And, and it almost appears that Scott Campbell throws better when he's in a little bit of duress. That time, he was getting chased around by the defensive front of Cleveland, and he just simply pops the ball out there to, to Haynes. Now, Haynes is working one-on-one. -on -one. Does that little stop route come back? And the key thing is when you work back to the football, he's working against Frank Minifield. Minifield knows every move that a guy wants to make because he computerizes everything. Well, I think he got a little surprise on that one. But old Frank will go back and put another uh, disc in there and figure out what to do on that pass the next time it comes around. We're going to talk about Frank Minifield's computerized approach to the game at halftime here on CBS Sports. And again, Rozier loses yardage. Toss sweep that went for not Grayson, the first man there to break it up. And what, what David Grayson did, number 56, is he just simply disrupts the play. Watch as they're trying to run the sweep outside. Grayson comes right in and makes the penetration into the backfield, breaks up the flow of the play, and as a result, the Falcons just can't get out of the backfield. Raymond Claiborne comes in to help out on the stop. We're down to 2.42 to go first quarter. No score. The Browns drove down and missed a 37-yard field goal. Jerry Glansville, or Jerry Glanville's Falcons have second and 14 now at their own 44-yard line. End around to Pringle. He's got some room. Into Browns territory near the 47-yard line. Thane Gash made the stop. 
Always helps to have a little pizzazz in your playbook, and this is what this one is. They're faking a sweep to the uh, right, and that'll come back with Pringle number 24 coming back the other way. You see everybody in that offensive line pulling to the right. Pringle comes around on the reverse. He's got one or two guys to beat and simply can't do it because Thane Gash comes up and wraps him up pretty good, and then he gets some help later on from some of his other teammates. Pringle in there because Broussard right there on the left of your screen, the number one draft choice, inactive today. Yeah, they say he's got a boo boo, a hamstring pull. That's exactly what Jerry Lanville said. He said it's a boo boo. Third and five. Rising in motion. They're going to bring it up. Here comes a blitz. Campbell incomplete. Broken up by Tony Blaylock. The problem is they burned up the clock, though. You saw Scott Campbell turning around and trying to get the thing adjusted. And I don't know if they got the playoff. On the offense, there was no play. We will penalize five yards, still third down. Well, that's another break for the Falcons. Even though the penalty goes against them, they'll have another chance here because the Browns could not decline that penalty. So again, the Falcons will have a third down. Look at the old veteran trying to help a young guy. That's uh, Mike Johnson talking to Blaylock. Hey, just hang in there, partner. That's one of the things you look for, though, in a team like the Browns and the situation that they're in is some veteran leadership. Some guys trying to bring up those young people and telling them how to play and how to win. That's something they've become used to here in Cleveland. Falcons from their red gun set, third and ten. Thomas in motion. Campbell is going to go down. Anthony Pleasant, the first one there, and Michael Dean Perry helped him out. And you want to know the shameful part about it, Brad? That time, Mike Ken is just doing a sensational job. Watch, watch Mike Ken right here. He just takes his man all the way down the line of scrimmage, three steps back, rides his guy all the way down. He's in great shape, but Scott decides to run up field, and that's where Mike has got his man. Rob Burnett got nice pressure, too. He got a piece of the football, and it made Campbell reload and take more time, so give him a little credit as well. Full hag to kick. Brennan back for Cleveland. End over end kick, not a good one. And Brennan just wants his teammates to clear out. And they do with 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Still no score here at Cleveland Stadium. One of the largest stadiums in the NFL, also one of the older stadiums in the National Football League. The Cleveland Stadium will not have 80,000 plus this afternoon. Scoreless game between the Falcons and the Browns with 32 seconds left in stanza number one. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggetts along with you. And Bernie Kozar and his Browns offense working from its own 29 yard line. Metcalf in motion. The pass to Metcalf in the flat. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah. job by Brian Jordan. As Metcalf put those Metcalf moves on, but they didn't pay off. Cowboys fighting for a playoff spot. Tampa Bay out in front with a long Vinny Testaverde touchdown run. Houston have a little more trouble with Kansas City than they had with the Second Browns down. a week ago. Browns 32. Here we're scoreless with maybe one more play left in the half, maybe not. Uh, in the quarter, I should say. And just as we say that, the gun goes off as Bernie dropped back to pass, doesn't get the playoff. And at the end of the first quarter, the score, the Falcons nothing, the Browns nothing here in Cleveland. Ready for the second quarter here in Cleveland. No score through the first 15 minutes. And the Falcons have held a lot of opponents in check in quarter number one. Yeah, the problem has been when you get later on in the ball game is uh, understanding how to take that same emotional level that they have in the first quarter and transferring it to the third and the fourth quarter. In fact, the second quarter has been the worst for Atlanta as far as being outscored. But the Browns have it to start the second quarter. They've got 36 yards in total offense due to Browns. The Falcons with 40. That's our first quarter numbers. Metcalf in motion. The give is to Kevin Mack, who bounces outside. Flags are down as Rady runs down Mack on the far side. 
See if we have a holding call on Cleveland. Yeah, and I tell you why it happens too is when that uh, defensive line moves that quickly against you laterally down the line of scrimmage, you tend to grab, reach out and touch someone. You want to hold on. <laughs> Here's Dick Hantak. He's trying to find a guilty party. Maybe Tony Jones, the right tackle. Holding. Offense. Number 82. 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. That's Ozzie Newsom. Hey, you know, how does a finesse blocker, Ozzie has always been a finesse blocker. How does he get called for holding, you know? A finesse blocker. Now, You're... really, there is no such thing, is there? <laughs> that means you don't block at all. Yeah, right? you, you, you tend to cut people. That's what you usually do. You go for the low level block. Oh, Oz. Four wide receivers for the Browns with Metcalf in a slot. Kozar got it complete out to the 29 yard line. Let's get an update on the Cowboys and the Cardinals as we go to Greg Gumble back in New York. Greg? All right, Brad, at Texas Stadium, Emmett Smith has gone into the end zone again. This is the prettiest little 11-yard run you'll see in a long time. A little zigzag here and back there and into the end zone. The extra point good this time. Start of the second quarter, 13-3, Cowboys. Brad? All right, Greg, thanks. No score here as we're early in the second quarter. And, boy, that rookie out of Florida has made the Cowboys so much better. Well, earlier in the season, we nicknamed him the little train, and it was the little train that could, apparently. Third and nine for the Browns. Those are plenty of time. Got it to Slaughter. Let's see, did he get the first down? Butler and Case are there. He may have gotten just enough. They give him a pretty good spot. Well, one of the things you're not seeing out of Atlanta uh, right now, Brad, is uh, that tough man-to-man uh, -to -man defense. So watch right here. This is Butler working against Slaughter. First thing, you want to get a good jam. He does not get the good jam on Slaughter. Slaughter gets some separation and gets back in. And the safety, really, is Scott Case is coming in to help out. It's not his man. It's Bobby Butler's guy. Well, Jerry Glanville told us last night, he said, we get in a foot race with number 84, number 88. We're in trouble. And Slaughter picked up the first down there. the single setback. Kozar wants to throw to Mack in the flat. He's in trouble. And Robert Lyles runs him down from behind. And those two have met before. Lyles, a former Houston Oiler. Yeah, he's he's been down here on this turf one or two times before. Watch him right here. The middle of your screen. Watch him on the rush. He's working against Tony Jones, number 66. Now, Tony's about 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, and about 300 pounds. Gets a good little push there, but Bernie pulls the ball down, squeezing it a little bit, and that gives Lyles a chance to get in and get the sack. And they had some people open downfield as well. 84, Webster Slaughter. Caught that last pass. He's wide open. He's doing jumping jacks down there because he wants Bernie to see him. And Bobby Butler, the happiest guy in the stadium, that he didn't yeah, see him. He's got Slaughter down there doing aerobics. <laughs> Second down at 14. Metcalf on the end around with blockers in front. Falcons do a nice job of stretching it out. And the ball loose. The Falcons say they have it and they do. Jim Schachter and the Browns are saying he was down. But what happens, he got his head twisted when he went down. Watch right here. His head gets snapped back. You see his upper body's going one way, legs going another, and that's when he gave up the ball. But he is down on the ground. You saw the knee down there already. So I'm sure this one's going to be reviewed, and what they're going to try to find out is whether or not the knee was down when the ball came out. Let's take another look at it. Watch his knees. The, the knees go down before the ball bounces out. There's the head that I tell you right there. See the head snap right there. Left really knee is down. Field. Ball Did comes they out. Fumble, recovered by the defense. First and ten. Well, our replay was too late for them. <laughs> I thought it had to be uh, irrefutable evidence, and I don't think that they had conclusive evidence on that play. Well, Eric Metcalf agrees with you, Dan, and he's trying to figure out whether or not he'll be able to turn his head tomorrow to check a blind spot while he's driving. Yeah, he really got jammed in between two guys there. So the fumble recovery gives it back to the Atlanta offense. At the Browns 46. Well, hold on. Maybe we'll have another look. They're going to take another look at it, I'm sure. Jerry Glanville saying, hey, you already said we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing he might be pointing to is he wants some more time on the clock, because right now there are 13 seconds on the clock, on the play clock. So Jerry's saying, hey, I should get the full 25. There, they just put it back up. Please set the play clock. At 20 seconds. 
So that's why we have the delay here. Brad, there's something interesting we saw in the Houston game uh, when they played the uh, Browns last week, and that is uh, we saw one of the uh, Houston players uh, turn around, Drew Hill turn around and signal to Warren Moon after there was a questionable play to speed it up. They came up and ran a clock play right now to get the thing going so they couldn't review it. And the Falcons offense will stay out there, much to the disgust of the Browns bench. First and ten, Falcons at the Browns 46. So the Falcons were their first break from their defense. Rozier. Cuts it up to the 40 yard line. A pickup of six. It'll be second and four. Van Waiters in on the stop. Mike Rozier, a couple of weeks against Tampa Bay at 115 yards on 23 carries. As the Falcons really went to the ground game in that game and ended up losing anyway. They started the season throwing it all over the place, and then their offense has changed a bit. So is their defense for that matter. Well, one of the things you have to do, one of the reasons why you have to change when you come in a place like Cleveland is the weather forces you to change a little bit. But you're right, they're not throwing the ball all over the park like they used to. Perry jumps off, and this should give Atlanta a free first down unless he was drawn offside. Encroachment, defense, number 92, five-yard penalty. Michael Dean has got it works off the snap. He tells he likes to get up there early, try to get a feel for the snap. And here he is right down here. Watch him. He's going over, off there, and he says, hey, look, I'm in your backfield. Give me the handoff. But he, what he tries to do is he tries to time it out through the quarterback's cadence and get a nice jump on the ball. That time, he was just a little early. Said he likes to get that lean in there, too. And he said, I've just backed off the ball a little bit so I can lean a little more. That time, he leaned too far. First down, Atlanta. A pitch to Rozier. That one looked like it stuck to Scott Campbell's hand as he tried to get it out there. Tom Gibson drops him for a loss of about a half yard. Then he tested early with a long touchdown run to give Tampa Bay that lead. I tell you, you know, we were talking about Michael Dean earlier jumping off, but watch him on this play here. You want to know what the life of a defensive lineman is like. This time they got combination blocks on him. Well, we can't get to it right now because they're getting ready to run the ball. We'll try to show you one of these with Michael Dean up front and what he goes through on a given play. Second down, a long 10. Campbell. In trouble. Drop back at the 47-yard line. Clay Matthews. 13 years out of USC, and he can still track down the quarterback. Now he's number 57. Clay Matthews may well be playing his last game here at Cleveland Stadium, too. 13 years, as you said, Brad. And they don't know whether or not he's going to come back next year, but he's catching up with Scott Campbell. Scott never had a chance on the rollout to set up and throw the ball. He was running the whole time. Matthews, who has said that although he's had great years here, he would sort of like to end his career on the West Coast, which is where his home is. Here's a guy from Chicago, though. What does he know about warm weather on the West Coast? He only went to USC, you know? Third down and a mile for Atlanta's offense. From the red gun, Campbell throws deep middle as Collins. First down at the 21-yard line. Minifield brings down Sean Collins with his first catch of the day, a pickup of 25. Boy, what an alert play by Sean Collins to stay active. He recognized right away that Scott Campbell was in a little trouble. Scott did a nice job of pulling up on the play and then spotting his receiver downfield. Watch Collins come from this near side. Here's number 85, the jam up there, up top. But he gets going. He gets past Braggs. Now Braggs tries to close back in on him, 36. But it's too late. Collins makes the reception. Maybe the best pass Scott Campbell has thrown so far in his two starts. Yeah, he wasn't aiming that one. He was firing it. That one had something on it. Wants to throw again. Horizon. Nice job defensively by Raymond Claiborne. Even with exceptional speed, it's tough to beat the old veterans on the fade. And that time, Raymond Claiborne just reads the play all the way. Watch him here. He's looking back for the ball. He looks like uh, he should be wearing a Falcons uniform the way he reads this thing. Just slips up there and knocks it out. At the 21-yard line, second down and 10, with 9.48 to go in the half, and still we have no score. Rozier trips and goes down 
Maybe got a yard as he went down in the zone and then crawled for a yard. It'll bring up third down and nine. And Brad, you, was there. I'm sorry, Brad, you mentioned the key thing. You said he slipped. And we were walk, walking on the field before the game. You see, right between the hash marks is pretty much worn. Now, Atlanta's getting down to that area where normally the infield is on the baseball diamond. And there's very little grass down there. And if it is down there, it's painted. It'll be a bad spot to have to kick field goals from, too. And actually, Corrick sort of found that out a little while ago when he missed from 37. Falcons are three out of six on their third down conversions. They have a third and nine here. Both wide receivers to the top of your screen. Scott Campbell going to take off on his own. Got near the 12, and he's going to be about a yard shy. And let's see, does Jerry Glanville have a decision to make? Nope, he's going to bring out the kicker. Watch at the end of this play, Jamie Dukes, the center number 74, getting down and giving Scott Campbell a convoy. And watch the block that he puts on Thane Gash, number 30. You see Dukes right there, 64. Watch that block. Those are the kind of you run, but you run those back. Here's another look at it. You run these back when you get into the, the film room on Monday. Dukes getting out there, stretching it out. Saw him the other day, told me he looked a little bit like Luther Vandross. <laughs> watch him here now. That's a nice shot. Campbell didn't get the first down. So Davis will try a 30-yard field goal to try to break the scoreless tie. And Greg Davis has got us our first points of the day from 30 yards out. 8-10 to go first half. Falcons lead 3-0. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Color Color Gold Film, show your true colors. And by Miller Genuine Draft, with a reminder to please think when you drink this holiday season. University Circle there, Cultural Arts Center here in Cleveland, where the Browns trail the Falcons 3-0 on a 30-yard Greg Davis field goal. Eric Metcalf back deep. He's got two kickoff returns for touchdowns this year. No other Browns ever done that in a single season. Fred, I like the way you're pointing out all these cultural points here in Cleveland. If it wasn't for our producer, George Barris, <laughs> who's from Cleveland, we would never know. <laughs> George wanted to drive us around this morning just to show us the sights. We said, we think we'll sleep in, George. Thanks anyway. Davis high and short. Cord comes up there, the rookie running back to take it and gets a nice return out to about the 37-yard line. Eight minutes and a second to go. First half. Atlanta Falcons lead Cleveland by a field goal. This NFL playoff summary is sponsored by AT&T. The right choice. If the season ended today, the 49ers and Giants would have a first round bye. And Green Bay and Chicago and Philadelphia and Washington would play to see who meets the world champions and the Giants who lost yesterday. Bernie Kozar at the controls for the Browns. As Cleveland trails here in the second quarter, 3 0. Ozzie Newsom sets up on the left side and now Metcalf in motion. Metcalf in and out of his hands. I think I would have covered that a little quicker if I was Eric Metcalf. Yeah, that it, could have been a lateral. That's almost. right. Whenever there's a, that kind of question, you want to jump on the ball. Now, the interesting thing was the Falcons switched up the uh, the uh, defensive backs on this play when Metcalf came in motion, and Jordan came up to try to meet him. And originally, it was Bobby Butler up there, but Eric Metcalf just simply dropped that Second one. Down. Second and ten for the Browns. Metcalf, the tailback, in the Cleveland eye. If they set up that way, it's the way it appears. Again, Metcalf in motion. Ozar to slaughter underneath. Gets up and got it across the 45, out to about the 47-yard line. Still about a yard short of the first down. Ken Tippins had him dead to right back there uh, as he made the reception. That is Webster Slaughter. But watch Tippins come from inside. He's got the play on right now, but he just slips down and misses Webster Slaughter. And as a result, Slaughter gets a couple extra yards. Now you see 84 right there. Make the reception. Tippins on the miss. 
Later on, he gets tackled by the secondary of the Falcons. Slaughter's third catch of the day, his 50th of the season, number 84, right there in the slot right, third and one. Kevin Mack, the big back behind Kozar, gets the call. Down to the Atlanta 45. About eight yards in a hurry for Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack is one of those guys I'm sure Bernie Kozar wasn't talking to when he screamed at his team a little bit earlier uh, in the season, like a couple of weeks ago, and uh, just got on everybody. He said, we got to start playing with pride. He says, that goes for the coaches as well as uh, for the players. Kozar said, I really question what type of worth, work ethic and dedication we have in this organization. Some people don't know what it is to be a Cleveland Brown. He's wanted to be one since he was a kid, and he's got his Browns a first down. At the Falcon 46. Bozar in trouble. Got away. Complete to the tight end. Scott Galbraith. The tackle by Scott Gates. And you, you, you saw the tough shot that he took there, Bernie Kozar did. Next Saturday, it's the Lions and the Packers in the Central Division matchup, the NFC. Noon Eastern time. Noon Eastern on the NFL today. And some of the greatest plays in NFL history we'll have on that one for you. Look forward to that. Second down and Second a long eight. eight We're down under six minutes to go in the half. Atlanta leading 3 0. At the Falcons 43. Kozar across the middle. Of the Kevin Max got another first down. Ken Tippins, Deion Sanders, Scott Case, all holding on for dear life, trying to bring down number 34. He picked up 11. I'm sure most fans will remember the stories about Kevin Mack last year with the drug problems that he had, and he was suspended for a while, came back late in the season. But he's really dedicated himself to trying to bring himself back, and he doesn't want to talk very much about the situation that he went through. He's just going to try to go forward from where he's at now and become the best that he can be. And I think that Kevin Mack is really making some serious progress in that direction. Quiet young man, really bashful and shy. Browns another first down at the Atlanta 33. Falcons thought about a blitz and backed off it. The long fade. Deion Sanders picks it off with one hand. Prime time with a left hand stops that Cleveland drive. Oh my goodness. You won't see many of these folks. You see prime time number 21 right at the top of your screen. Watch him reach out and stick this thing with one hand. He's looking at the receiver all the way. Sticks it out, grabs it, pulls it in. That's a great interception by Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders in left center field comes up with the baseball catch here and makes the interception against Ber Bernie Kosar trying to throw the fade to Webster Slaughter. Well, this is not Deion's first game at Cleveland Stadium. In fact, he's been here before. One for five, a homer, a couple of RBIs, <laughs> and a steal. And, and he just stole that one. Yeah, now an INT. <laughs> Excellent play by the sometimes flashy Deion Sanders. Actually, he's quieted down considerably, too. Fans aren't quiet down there in the dog pound, are they? Campbell from his own end zone. He got rid of it. Unless they call in the grass. And indeed they may. Nope. Dick Hantek says no. We almost saw the safety sign go up. Boy, if you're throwing from down here in the end zone, or you want it to be one, two, three, pop the ball out. Don't take any time looking downfield because all it takes is for that pocket to collapse on you, and it's a sack. He was not in the grass in control of any defensive lineman, though. Rob Burnett was the guy who had the pressure on him. That was close for Campbell. Very close. Second and ten. And again, it'll get noisy in the dog pound. Tracy Johnson out near the seven yard line a bit more breathing room but it's still third and long Cleveland Stadium where you see the fans there behind the goalposts they're the ones that can get a little loud on you if you're an offensive team down on their end the Falcons lead three nothing with 4 15 to go in the half with Dan Jiggins I'm Brad Nessler.
There's the dog pound, Brad. Now, we're up here, folks. We're in the kennel. See, this is well taken care of when the box is up here. But that's the dog pound down there. They always show up down there, even when this place isn't sold out. A couple of great Danes, some German Shepherds, you know. Rising in motion. Tracy Johnson again, and he got it out to the 12. Short of the first down, though, but he got the Falcon punting team a little more room. And I'm sure Jerry Glanville said, hey, look, I just want to get away from that goal line and not throw another pass with my quarterback sitting back there in the uh, end zone. Glanville loves to coach here. Yeah. He thinks this is the greatest crowd in the world. Let's see how much pressure the Browns put on Fulhay. Brian Brennan back as the punt returner for Cleveland. Fulhay got some heat but got it away. Brennan at midfield. Nice return by Brennan of 15 yards. And the Browns in great field position at the Atlanta 35-yard line. Three minutes, five seconds. And you saw Jerry Glanville out there in the field talking to the officials. And he told us he got his knee blown out here when he was with the Oilers. And the, the officials came over to him, and he never went left the field. The officials came over to him and asked him how come he wasn't out there screaming at him. He showed him the brace that he put on his leg. Said it won't be today, pal. <laughs> Went back a couple of games later and had the knee operated on. Shaved the femur down. Bernie Kozar sets Kevin Mack where he wants him. The Browns at the Atlanta 35 with 3.05 to go in the half. Are they going to get this playoff? Just barely. Wide open is Ozzie Newsom. to the 19. One thing Bernie Kozar does a great job of is finding a hot receiver, Ozzie Newsom, right there, 82. You see him fake the block, comes off of that, linebacker rushes, Bernie just dumps it outside. Hot receiver is the tight end, let him have it. 17-yard pass play to the veteran who's seen a lot of action over 13 years out of Alabama. Kevin Mack trying to go wide. Has the corner. Knocked out near the 12-yard line. Scott Case ran him out. Brad, I said earlier that Ozzie Newsom was a finesse blocker. Let's watch him on this play. I think he's working against Brian Jordan here, the safety. So he comes up and tries to make the stop. You see Ozzie get in his face and chicken block him a little bit, then try to throw late. But he's got Kevin Mack coming around on the express, and that helps a lot. Help to spring Mack three for seven yards. Second and three at the Atlanta 11-yard line. Mack again. First down. First and goal for the Browns. What I'm seeing in there, Brad, is the center, Mike Babb, Ralph Tam, 65, and... Greg Ricosi, that middle of that offensive line for Cleveland, doing a nice job. From the ice bowl to the immaculate reception, the greatest plays in the NFL's history, then the Packers battle the Lions, the NFL next Saturday. That's long snapper Mike Morris, whose brother Pat is in the Middle East. And uh, Mike Babb, whose dad is in uh, Allen... Saudi Arabia. And they both have uh, wanted to send along some special messages. As a matter of fact, Mike Babb told us they sent his father a whole care package. First and goal of the five. Kevin Mack. Touchdown. He's going to keep that one. You want to start looking at some things here at Cleveland that you can start building yourself around again. I think Kevin Mack is an ideal place to start. Nice little move there in the backfield on the avoid of Bryant. Just takes it all the way in and reaches out across the goal line. Keep in mind, the only way to get that touchdown, you have to break the front of that line, not the back. Good effort by Kevin Mack. They cap a 35-yard drive. Remember, Brennan started things off with the 15-yard punt return. And now Corey 
Alex, extra point. Taps it and makes it. The Browns seven and the Falcons three. Kevin Mack capped off the Cleveland touchdown drive from five yards out. There's his numbers on the day. Deion Sanders with the music going here before the kickoff, kind of warming up. Keep it loose. To a little Janet Jackson in the background. Wagner will kick Deion Sanders the last couple of weeks has really come on as a kicker off return man. He's had three over 30 yards the past couple of weeks. And he's dangerous. He's going to have a chance, I think. Takes it away from Jones, the up man. Got outside near the 20. That's it. 151 to go in the half. We've got a penalty marker down and a pretty good fight going on over in front of the Atlanta bench. So as we sort all this out. See if one team or the other will get the advantage or if it'll be offsetting penalties. Jerry Glanville's team will scrap with you. There's no doubt about that. It's a personal foul on the Browns, though. Personal foul against the defense. Number 50, 15 yards, first down. Van Waiters with the penalty and so they will walk it off against the Browns with 151 to go in the half Cleveland in front of Atlanta 7 3 151 to go in the half 7 3 Cleveland Frank Millifield out there on the corner he'll be part of our halftime Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights and a look at Frank Millifield the computer whiz who feeds all that info in on wide receivers that he has to face every week and then puts it to use. I was real interested in the conversation you had with him about how he did that. He really got to it on the computer thing. About his software and interfacing with other receivers and all that. I almost sound like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> he just laughed at me. <laughs> From the red gun. Campbell incomplete. Collins is going to want a flag and won't get one. Yeah, because he was tripped on the play at that time by Raven Claiborne. It's just as he was reaching down to, to pick the ball up. Here's another look at it. Watch Raymond Claiborne 26 right in the middle of your screen working against Collins and as Collins reaches down their feet get tangled up right there and it was incidental contact or it may have been too late. They just ruled that hey look tripped him after the ball was already delivered. John Collins who had the big rookie season last year for Atlanta. Scott Campbell only three out of nine on the day second and ten. Throws to Rozier a little screen on the left flags are down. Rozier to the 39, but penalty markers on the play. And I have a feeling. Mike Ken's a guy arguing yeah, down there. Yeah, he, I think he was the guy, but he didn't hold. If that's what the call is against, I think he, you could call him for tripping, maybe. The options being given to Clay Matthews, and here's Dick Antak with a call. Tripping, offense, number 78, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down, second down. And his 13th year out of Michigan and having a good season. He really is. And uh, those are just old techniques that you know you, you, if you're the tackle to the hot side of the screen, you got to get your man down. You try to cut him or invite him inside and turn him and seal him inside. And that time, Mike got in a bad position. He tried to leg with him. Tampa Bay handling the Vikings. Warren Moon has another touchdown pass in that game. Campbell goes down again. Michael Dean Perry, his 10th sack of the season. Third of the day for the Browns. Michael Dean, one of the finest in the National Football League. Michael Dean Perry on the third sack of the day for the Cleveland Browns. I think he's working right there against Jamie Dukes. It's kind of tough to see because we've got an umpire in the way, but uh, 
No, I'm sorry, that's not him. He's worked. That's Gibson. Michael Dean is outside working against the right tackle. Chris Hinton just gets in on the power rush. We were talking to him earlier uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, about how he grew up with William Perry and the whole family of what seven sons and about four sisters. And he's the youngest out of all of them. You can believe he was a little spoiled. He's the baby. <laughs> if you you call him that, though, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Here's a direct snap draw out of Rozier. And the Browns have it read well. Matthews and Perry are there. The Browns are used to seeing that direct snap play. Uh, the Falcons ran it against Houston. That's your average fan in the dog pound. Browns lead 7-3. I'm glad you said in the dark pound, that's the average fan. <laughs> <laughs> Not overall in the stadium, just in to, that end of the stadium. I'd hate to impugn the integrity of everybody <laughs> here in the stadium. <laughs> Got full hag to kick away to Brian Brennan again. Last time, Van Waiters got a little pressure on full hag. Here they come. He got it away. Flags are down. Brennan takes it to 40. And he's got another nice return. This one good for about 13 yards. But we have penalty markers all over the field. Maybe somebody down too early. Let's see. Nope. Holding call. And that's typical of when you're playing losing football. All the little things start adding up. The penalties when you get a good break. Uh, interceptions when you're driving and looking pretty good. All those things just start adding up. The little points that make you lose football games. And we straighten it all out here. Maybe we'll get the call from Dick Hanson. We have holding on the receiving team. We have a post-possession foul. The 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot where possession was gained. It will be first down. That's going to take it back to about the 30 because Brennan took at about the 40-yard line with a catch. And so the spread there is about 25, 30 yards, the difference that is, between where the ball ended up and with the add the penalty on from where he took the ball. So the Browns at their own 30 yard line. There's a look at the holding right there. Boy, that's a nice takedown, though. Yeah, that's uh, that's Stephen, Bragg's. Stephen Bragg's 36. And the Browns appear to have jumped as Casillas and Barnett come flying in off the Atlanta defensive front. This is a problem. The Browns had a lot last week against Houston. Their tackles jumping early. False start. Offense. Number 73. Five yard penalty. First down. Rakosi is the man that moved first. These two teams with five wins between them, so obviously they look good when the draft rolls around in April. And if the season ended, ended today, New England would be number one, Cleveland number two, Atlanta number three. That's not an honor you seek every year. Nope. Certainly one that Cleveland has not been used to over the last uh, decade or so. Falcons would also have the seventh pick. They have a couple of choices in round one. Kozar deep for Langham. Langhorn outran Bobby Butler for 38 yards. Exactly that, Brad, on the timing pattern. You see Langhorn at the bottom of your screen on the go route. He recognizes that Bobby Butler's right up on his face. Butler, again, does not get the jam at the line of scrimmage. And if you don't get the jam against these Cleveland wide receivers, you're going to be chasing them into the end zone. So now the Browns with one minute, 10 seconds to go in the half with a golden opportunity to move it down and get some more points before the break. Kozar wants to go left side this time. And it's caught at the 11 by Brennan. That should have never been a completion. In fact, maybe it wasn't. Pass is ruled incomplete. Ball hit the ground. 
Ryan Brenner would have to be a magician to make this reception. Let's watch him. 86 right there. You see him putting the move on Shelley. Little pick up underneath. Langhorn coming underneath. Now let's see if Brennan catches this ball. He's bobbling it, and you cannot see it from this angle, but it, it looked like it was sticking on his chest when he turned around, much like the reception he made against uh, the Broncos in the championship right. game. The side judge appeared to have a pretty good look at it, and they will call it incomplete. Brennan playing in his 100th game as a Cleveland Brown today. He's a clever wide receiver. Guy's got some good hands, pretty decent speed. You know, people just think he's deceptive because uh, he runs the 4-6, but actually... The people here in Cleveland will tell you they've timed them in a little bit faster times than that. Around 4-5. Please return the game clock to one minute and four seconds. One minute and four seconds. Brennan came into this game with game 279 clock, career receptions, which is... Thank you. Right up there in the upper echelon in Brown's all-time marks. The football at the Falcons 37 yard line. Second down at 10 upcoming. Ernie Kozar with 64 seconds to work. His team in front 7 3. And this play is being reviewed, as we said earlier. So we await the official word here. We thought we had it once already. There you see with. 104 to go. The Browns on Kevin Mack's five yard touchdown run, leading the Falcons 7 3. I don't want him coming down my chimney. <laughs> in that case, get the fire started in the fireplace. Huh? We not only saw people dress like dogs out in the parking lot on the way, we saw real dogs out there in Browns jerseys. Yeah, I don't jersey know if they on. let those guys in or not. <laughs> he had to be a special teams player, though. <laughs> Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from around the league. Some important games going on with playoff implications. And Frank Minifield, who we are seeing here today, also a special feature on him with how he works on the computer every week to prepare for his opponent. You know, I was wondering in these replay situations when they take this long, is why don't they just ask the guy, say, hey, Brian, did you catch the ball? You, you think know? that would work? <laughs> Be honest. You know, <laughs> did you catch the rock or what? You've got to live with this answer, Brian. <laughs> did you catch it? After further review, play stands is called on the field. Incomplete pass. Ball hit the ground. The ruling was that it was a simultaneous catch and the ball hit the ground. It sounds to me like it's a catch. If it's simultaneous to hitting the ground and they call it a catch. Or a it's real a catch. short dribble. Yeah. Second and ten. After all of that. We got enough time. Ozar will work from the gun. Kevin Mack adjusts to Kozar's right. Here comes the all-out blitz. Deep ball. And Deion Sanders almost had his second interception intended for Metcalf. See, but the tough thing is for Bernie Kozar is Bernie Kozar on the blitz situations never gets to look downfield. He's got to release the ball before the receivers have made their breaks and established their patterns. And the main reason why is because he's not getting good protection up front. Now, this is the blitz situation. Watch Bernie Kozar here. He drops back one, two. He's got to let the ball go because he knows that pressure's coming from the backside as well as right into his face. And off the hands of Deion Sanders on the other end. Yeah, that one fell in for a base hit almost. <laughs> Third and ten. Those are short to Mack. Tries to get to the first down stick and can't. Got to the 31-yard line. He's about four yards short. Browns fans want Cleveland to go for it here. Hey, at this point in the season, what do you have to lose, you know? Roll the dice a little bit. And the Browns will take a timeout. The other question here is whether or not Corrick, who's had the flu all week and will be kicking into a bit of a wind, has enough leg for 48 yards. That's about what it's going to be. As we were talking about a little bit earlier, he told us that he lost six pounds because of that stomach virus that he had. So it has its effect on him. Coming up next Saturday, don't forget, special time. The NFL today gets things going, noon Eastern, and then an NFC Central Division clash between the Lions and the Green Bay Packers.
We'll also next week have the best plays in NFL history. That'll be something to look forward to. What's your favorite play in NFL history? Have one? I'm, I'm still kind of partial to all the runs that Walter Payton made. <laughs> I think we could make up a highlight film of some of the best plays just off of his running ability. But certainly the, the Marcus Allen uh, touchdown run in the Super Bowl where your reverse field comes to mind as well. I'd be willing to bet maybe some Jim Brown runs on this oh, absolutely. field will be in there. Fourth down, and the Browns will go for it. Falcons show blitz, and here it comes. Langhorn, first down. Credit Kevin Mack with the good pickup, though. That time, blitz pickup. Just buried the linebacker. That allowed Kozar to look downfield. Let's see if Kozar downs it to regroup his thoughts. He will. 28 seconds left. Browns in front, 7-3. to three. And they've got second down at the Atlanta 21-yard line. Let's watch this last reception for the Cleveland Browns. Reggie Langhorn, number 88, coming in on the slant. That's just a little bit of a pick, too. You see when those receivers cut in front of one another, the defensive backs have to give them a little slack back off, and that gives you that little hole to dump the ball in. The last couple of years Langhorn's caught more passes than any other Cleveland Brown second and ten on the shotgun Kozar with time got it to Brennan to the 12 short of the first down it appears by about a half yard and we're down to 15 seconds again the Browns trying to line it up to stop the clock but Kozar will throw the fade incomplete Six seconds left in the half. Penalty marker down in the Browns backfield. Yeah, and I think the problem there may have been that uh, I wonder if everybody was set. Oh boy, was late hit. Oh. Those are the kind of penalties that have killed the Falcons all year. Here's the call. Personal foul. Defense. Roughing the passer. Half the distance. First down. Nonetheless, the field goal unit will come on. So that's a penalty that really doesn't hurt too much against the Atlanta defense because the field goal unit will be out there anyway for what looks like a chip shot. And the crowd here is disappointed because the Browns still have six seconds left on the clock. They want them to go for one more play, but if you run out the clock, then they'll be jumping on you for that. That's right. 23-yard field goal attempt by Jerry Corrick to try to put the Browns in front by seven. Mike Pagel the hole. Kick is good. So with two seconds left in the half, the Browns up 10-3. Corrick hits the field goal. And the Browns appear on their way to a seven-point lead at halftime. I assume they're just going to squib one here and not give Deion Sanders a chance to do anything with the ball. And you have to wonder on the uh, sideline for the Atlanta Falcons with the, the uh, road loss record that they've got coming into this ball game. what is it that turns you on when you get on the, uh, on the road and makes you a winner? And you start thinking about most of these guys on this team, a lot of them haven't won on the road with this club. Uh, in, the, in the last couple of years, they haven't seen a victory on the road. 17 straight setbacks for the Falcons. They want to turn that around today. Don't forget, next Saturday, after football, we've got hoops. Season premiere college basketball here on CBS Sports. The Duke Blue Devils and the Sooners of Oklahoma. They Did played, Oklahoma run up some points? Well, what, they, they have 172 last Against night? Loyola Marymount. Brent Price, Mark Price's little brother, who the folks in this city of Cleveland know well, had 56 points for Oklahoma last night. That was track ball. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggetts with you at Cleveland Stadium, where the Browns lead the Atlanta Falcons 10-3, courtesy of a Kevin Mack touchdown run and Corrick's field goal a moment ago. And it's an hour one play away from intermission. And the Falcons anticipating the squib kick have moved everything up. Deion Sanders, the deepest man. He's near the 12-yard line. And Brian Wagner, I would imagine, just going to line drive one down there. Almost an onside kick, in fact. Picked up by Wilkins. Wilkins, laterals, ball still loose. Sanders finally gets his hands on it. 
and looking for a place to go. Well, that was a nice way to end the half. Falcons almost made something work there. Halftime in Cleveland. The Browns up 10-3. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Doug for performance, quality, safety, and value. Welcome home, America. Tots, the premium choice. And by Citizen Watches. Citizen, we've got elegant. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mitsubishi. The word is getting around. Today's Duracell, the copper top battery. And by GTE, at GTE, the power is on. Halftime at Cleveland Stadium, where the Browns lead the Atlanta Falcons 10 to three. Cleveland Stadium, one of the oldest and largest stadiums with a tremendous National Football League tradition. The last championship game, pre-Super Bowl that is, was in 1964. Browns were a big underdog to the Baltimore Colts and were only leading 3 nothing at halftime. But then Frank Ryan, their quarterback, went to work. His favorite receiver that day, Gary Collins. This another of three touchdowns in the second half. And the Browns are on their way to their fourth NFL title. Since then, though, they've gotten close, but they've lost three AFC championship games, all to the Denver Broncos. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggins back with you here in Cleveland where we know there's going to be a coaching change. You had a chance to talk to Art Modell a couple of minutes ago. What's the latest? Yeah, what he's saying is basically this. He said, I don't want to say anything right now. We haven't talked to anybody, but there are a lot of names going around, and some of them are coaches who are already coaching in the National Football League. Guys like John Robinson's been rumored. Uh, Bill Cower out at uh, Kansas City, the defensive coordinator, who was a coach here, special teams and defense. Well, you know, Art Modell has said, hey, this is going to be my pick. He knows that maybe he's not going to have that many years to try to win a Super Bowl, and and with that in mind, he says the coaching decision will be mine. And he's got some certain criteria he'd like to follow. Paul Brown, at age 37, took over the Cleveland Browns. And, of course, the revered Paul Brown in National Football League history. Don Shula always has been one of Modell's favorites, and he took over the Colts at age 32. So he's looking for a guy that fits that mold, a young guy, maybe a John Makovic at Illinois. You know him a little bit, Dan. Yeah, and John is a guy who coached in the National Football League with the Kansas City Chiefs and had a lot of success there. So I think what the key is, though, is the guy has to be young. And we mentioned the Bill Cower. I talked to him last night, and he said, uh, quite honestly, that he was flattered to be mentioned in with all these other coaches. And uh, he feels that if he was invited back uh, to Cleveland, there are a couple of things that would have to happen. Number one, the veteran dedication. Players coming back in and dedicating themselves to being successful and the veteran leadership. Wouldn't would it be ironic, about. Cower with Marty Schottenheimer <laughs> in Kansas City, if he comes back to Cleveland well, after all of that transpired? I think if you ask anybody here, they'll honestly admit that it was a mistake to let Marty Schottenheimer get away. Well, halftime, 10-3. Cleveland out in front as we take a look at why they are there. The Browns with 184 yards in total offense, and Bernie Kozar certainly warmed up in the uh, second quarter. Bernie was 13 out of 23 for 137 yards. And you see what Bernie has done as compared to Scott Campbell, who had the rough week last week. And I hate to say it for Scott, but he's picked up where he left off a week ago. And I take it back to something that Bernie Kozar told us the other day. He said, you know, you're going to play for the Browns. you got to have some pride in being a Cleveland Brown. And it's apparent that he's got that kind of feeling. And we talked about him getting on his players before. That's what he was saying to him. Falcons, you see, very few first downs and couldn't get much going on offense. They had only five first downs the whole game. Most of it was a punting situation for them. And the Browns have picked up three sacks on the afternoon, while Bernie Kozar has been fairly well protected by his offensive front that's been much maligned here in Cleveland. And the Browns not only with the lead, but they'll get the football first to start the third quarter. As Greg Davis will tee it up. Davis has accounted for all of Atlanta's offense with the uh, field goal. So 10-3 at halftime. And we're set to start the third quarter. Did you get your feet warmed up at halftime? Oh, uh, yeah, I got these big boots on. I'm great. I just barely got the feeling back in mind. Here's the kick. And Eric Metcalf at the three. Look out. He's out to the 34, and a late flag goes in, which might negate a nice return by Metcalf. Penalty marker was down at about the 19. It is indeed going to go against the Cleveland Browns. Go back to the statement we made before, Brad, about bad things happening when you're you know, in a losing scenario. 
the little penalties that take the yardage away from you, all the little mistakes, those things start adding up in a, in a bad Illegal season. block on return, number 55, 10-yard penalty, first down. So the Browns will be backed up deep in their own end, but they have done a nice job, especially on their first downs. Look at that comparison. In Atlanta, if you're going to try to run, I think if you're going to be successful against the Browns offensively, one of the things they should try to do is run the football. That's what we talked about earlier, Brad. The times that the Falcons have blitzed Bernie Kosar, they sort of paid the price today. So let's see how they play it here early third. Kevin Mack inside. Oliver Barnett will drag him down, but Kevin Mack with a quick five yards. It'll bring up second and five, so they're right on that average on the opening play of the third quarter. Dallas over Phoenix. Dallas wants to stay in the playoff hunt. Ooh, look what Tampa Bay's doing to the Minnesota Vikings. Without Ray Perkins. Good game, Miami and Seattle. 10-3 here. Cleveland in front with a second and five. Metcalf sweeps the left side. And it looks like he's going to get the first down. Darian Connor made the tackle. If I'm looking at Cleveland and trying to figure out what you have to do uh, to be successful on that side of the ball, I think you have to use your weapons. And one of the key weapons they have is Eric Metcalf. you got to put the ball in his hands a great deal, I think. And here he goes on that sweep over to the left side. But he's a guy that can change the game for you, that can put points on the board. And you got to use him successfully. Kevin Mack is the other guy. I think you have to let him run the football and give him an opportunity to carry it about 20 times a game. At the 21-yard line, first down, Browns. Metcalf in motion. Kozar goes out to him. Nice move by Metcalf and another Cleveland first down. Ernie, of course, he talked to us the other day. He said Eric Metcalf is a point maker. Now, That's you don't right. usually hear guys talk about points. He's a point maker. And if you let him go, he'll put that 21 that he's got on his back up on the board. Great on special teams and uh, as well as lining up from scrimmage. Jerry Glanville told us when he was with Houston, he wanted to make him the number one draft choice of the Oilers to put in the uh, the red gun down in Houston. He said he would have been the perfect ingredient, well, along with Warren Moon and Drew and that, Hill and Ernie Gibbons and the rest. At that S-back position. And he can also move out and play wide like he does here at Cleveland. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Browns. Mack. He's got close to five yards as he just blasts his way off the left side before Brian Jordan can bring him down. He's just punishing the interior of the uh, Falcons defense. He's loading it up and bringing two loads. He's backing the truck up twice. Watch him here, 34, Kevin Mack. The little slide along the line of scrimmage. He's getting some nice blocking up front from his offensive line, but he just gets low and gets that extra two or three yards. Eight carries, 46 yards, and a touchdown for the 230-pound Kevin Mack. Ozar changes it up on second and five. Metcalf improvises to the 41 yard line. Tim Green and Bobby Butler are there. You know what he looks like when he's running the ball like that. It looks like he's skiing. You know, you see somebody doing the downhill, a giant, the giant <laughs> slalom. That's exactly what he looks like because he just pops on his feet. Watch him pop here a couple of times as he's trying to make the escape. Now, this is a fake toss to one side to the left. Metcalf coming back over to the right. You see that there? Watch this little slalom, little downhill move right there. A little schusting down the field here at Cleveland Stadium. Nice job. Two tight ends set for the Browns. On third down, a yard to go. And Bernie Kozar is going to have to call timeout. He didn't have the right personnel, apparently. So the Browns with 11.30 to go third quarter with a touchdown lead. We'll be back. At Cleveland Stadium, you put the feet wherever you can to keep them warm. And during a commercial break, you're complaining a minute your feet are cold. I don't know why you wore those house slippers out here today. <laughs> Central Division, son. Third down of the yard. Mack has got it, and then some. All the way to the 31-yard line. If this were college football, Kevin Mack would be the player of the game. Number 34. Watch this punishing run up in the middle. Scott Case tries to level him off right there. He runs over Scott. Now he's looking for somebody else to
tackle him. No good on that. Dion drapes himself on one arm. He gets thrown to the turf as well. 27 yards ripped off by Kevin Mack. And Kevin shaking is over on the, the sideline, yeah. Shaking up on the play, but he got the Browns the first down. Five yard line. Scott Case ran him down. And the Browns have put together a good looking drive and have done most of it on the ground. There you see, you said coming in, they could use a ground game. They got it today, Dan. Yeah, they really needed to go over 100 yards, I thought, with one back. And certainly, if you could spread it around a little bit, that's even better. But Kevin Mack's been having a great day so far, and Eric Metcalf is right behind him. Second and three for the Browns, just outside the Atlanta 25. Langhorn in motion. Ozar incomplete and a flag down. Ozzie Newsom was trying to get open over the middle. That might be where the penalty has occurred, but it's going to go against Cleveland. Whoops, I think Dick Hantak just changed his mind. Holding, defense, number 54, five-yard penalty, first down. Robert Lyles, and I believe the man he was trying to cover was Ozzie Newsom. Yeah, and they've seen each other over the years a great deal. See, right in the middle of your screen, number 54, right there. Watch Robert Lyles. He grabs a hold of Ozzie on that shoulder, the inside shoulder, and Ozzie's trying to break away, and that's why he went down to the turf. And it's a first down for the Browns. They lead 10-3 and trying to add to it here in the third quarter. Metcalf, not much. Maybe a yard. The Vikings and the Buccaneers haven't had it down in Florida. Let's get an update, and we go to Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Brad, second play from scrimmage in the second half. Wade Wilson tosses the longest TD pass of his career, 75 yards to Hassan Jones. Dan Jiggins would say that's impossible to do without those offensive linemen protecting you. 23-7 bucks. Back to Cleveland. <laughs> You're all over it, Greg. <laughs> You're all over it. <laughs> well, it's good to see Hassan Jones back. He's been banged up a little bit. And Wade Wilson, too, who's coming off the, the broken hand and hooks up long. Kozar on second and long. Over the middle. Intended for Newsom, and this time Lyles with nice coverage. That was that was sensational coverage by Robert Lyles over there on that far side. But uh, you see Hugh Millen uh, warming up over in the Atlanta sideline, and it's quite possible that we will see him. And certainly Jerry Glanville told us he will not be afraid to to pull the trigger and get another guy out there. Last week, Scott Campbell threw three interceptions, but Jerry Glanville stayed with him the whole day. His idea going in give Scott as many chances as possible but he said we got to go to the bullpen if he can't get it done and so far today he hasn't. Metcalf in motion Browns from the shotgun here comes the blitz the fade for slaughter and he broke the wrong way. Brad if you got the fade on you know that the blitz is on it's a hot read you got to jump outside on the play if you can and that time Webster may have gotten forced inside by Dion but I don't know. Penalty marker now. Play. Falcons say it's against Cleveland. It is. I think Dion tried to force Webster to the inside Holding. of the field. Offense, number 74, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down, third down. Now the Falcons take the penalty because they wanted to move the Browns out as far as possible. Here's a play again. Now watch Dion. Let's see if he jumps outside and takes that outside away. Gets hands on just a little bit there. But no, Webster Slaughter just breaks back to the inside. You got to go outside on the fade into the corner. The Ball penalty. Fair. Yeah, he's the guy that got caught holding on the play. The eighth penalty against the Browns. So they got another shot here on third down. Third down. Ozar from the shotgun to Metcalf. 
Nice open field stop by Andre Bruce. And the Browns will bring out the field goal unit. Jerry Glanville uh, was telling us about how you talk about the defense. He calls it sticky ball. You got to be, you know, sticking the guy that got the football. And this is a nice job here by Atlanta of preventing Eric Metcalf from breaking this one and making a big play out of it. Good coverage there by Andre Bruce, a guy who's really got to start developing for the Falcons. He's got to start becoming the kind of player they expected him to be when they drafted him. So on fourth and 14, Jerry Corrick in. He's hit one and missed one on the day. This will be a 41-yard field goal attempt. Kick on its way, and he got it. The Browns add to their lead. Cleveland 13, the Falcons 3. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggetts at Cleveland Stadium where the Browns now lead by 10. Capping off a 66-yard scoring march with Jerry Cork's 41-yard field goal. Nice time-consuming drive, huh? Seven minutes, two seconds. A lot of that on the ground with Kevin Mack carrying the ball and draining the clock. Wagner to kick Deion Sanders deep for Atlanta. Keith Jones, the up man, takes it at the 15. Jones with a wall in front looking for the corner. Nice run back. Got it out to about the 37 yard line and here comes Hugh Millen. Hugh Millen waved by the Falcons this year and then re-signed waved in September re-signed in October and here he comes off the bench to take over at quarterback. It's always interesting to watch the uh, quarterback come off the bench because he's the guy that comes in and he's kind of pumped up the pressures off of him because it's all on the starter and that's when you can start having a little fun out there. Hugh Campbell, Campbell over the sideline. He didn't have much fun. No, today. he sure didn't. Millen will work from the red gun automatically here. Falcons know they have to pass a bit now. Incomplete. Hugh Millen's pass incomplete. Cleveland Stadium. Well, there's been several NFL championships ga championship games. Today, the Falcons and the Browns in the third quarter. It's Cleveland by 10. And the Falcons at the 37-yard line. Jerry Glanville's troops, though he's in his first year, this Falcon team hasn't won since November of 88 on the road. That's a long dry spell. Andre Risen, who's been quiet today, in motion. Millen steps up and goes deep for Risen. Incomplete. Falcons want a flag, and they don't get it. Cowboys and the Cardinals having a good one. Let's go to Greg Gumbel, Greg. All right, Brad, at Dallas, Emmett Smith has scored his third touchdown of the day. This one a one-yard run. And the Cowboys are all over their opponents from Phoenix. 27-3, third quarter. Can't do that without the offensive lineman either, Brad. I should have said Dallas having a good one today. Not that it was a good game. Well, watch the end of this play. This is a... Uh... Andre Risen number 80 working against Braggs in the 36 and Braggs is pushing him right there and you see why Andre wanted the uh, the pass interference on the play I think he should have gotten it in that yeah, situation I agree I think uh, Falcons maybe had a gripe there third down at 10 Millen buying time deep middle almost picked off by Minifield oh he had that one loaded in the computer you know that he had a better play on the ball than the intended receiver, that's for sure. He told us, he said, some, at some point or another, it's going to look like I'm, I'm the guy breaking on the ball, and that was clearly an example of it. What he does is he eliminates the situations by down and distance, and that's where he knows where you're going to go. He has a, a pretty good idea based on what your offense has done over the course of a couple of weeks. So the Falcons, even with the quarterback change, can muster no offense, and they'll have to kick it away again. Bullhag back to kick. Brian Brennan deep for the Browns. And the Browns just clear out of the way. And they'll have it back on offense. They'll have it on offense because they were able to break up the Atlanta attempt for the first down. Seven seventeen to go third quarter. The Browns by 10. 
And Rob Burnett earlier on the sideline was getting some uh, more cleats put on. And what he's doing is getting longer ones put on because the field's getting a little sloppy. So you go to the long stuff. Evan Mack not going very long here. The Falcons will drop him for a loss. One of the few times Mack hasn't gotten positive yardage. Ken Tippins, the linebacker, made the hit. Robert Lyles, former Oiler, having a chat with some of the Browns that he's seen over the years. Yeah, you know, you're down there and everybody's asking, hey, how's the family? How's everybody doing? Just great. How about yourself? <laughs> Ready for the holidays, that type of thing, right? <laughs> Second down, 11. Slaughter in motion. Ozar wants to go to him and goes short. Incomplete intended for Ozzie Newsom. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and this CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Cleveland Browns, and the National Football League is prohibited. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets with you at Cleveland Stadium, where the Browns lead Jerry Glanville's Atlanta Falcons 13 to 3. Jerry Glanville said about his Falcons, he said, the thing is that they've never given up all season long, even with all the adversity. They have had a real tough time trying to muster some offense since Chris Miller went down with an injury. Flags down as Kozar goes deep, intended for Langhorn, broken up by Bobby Butler. I think Tony Jones, the right tackle, came out of his stance again a little bit early. Let's wait and see. And Andre Bruce is getting into it with Tony Jones, number 66 down there, there getting up in each other's faces. It's a motion call is the preliminary signal against the Browns. And it should not, not go without being said that uh, Bobby Butler had excellent coverage on that play, too. They've been trying to pick on the 10-year veteran out of Florida State a little bit today. But illegal motion on the offense. The penalty was declined. Fourth down. Talked about the coverage that Butler had. Look at him stride for stride with Langhorn down there. Keeps that pressure on forcing Langhorn over to the sideline, looking back for the ball to avoid the penalty, and then just pushes it away. Ten years. That's a little experience out there in that corner. First punt of the day for Wagner. He's had four of them blocked this season. Low snap. And he has this one blocked. The Browns take it in midair. One of the officials has dropped his hat at the 35. Eddie Johnson's the guy that took that thing out of midair. And he's their special teams guy on the Browns. He's the captain of their special teams, the guy that's a leader out there. I think that's a dead ball. They can't advance that thing off of block. Dick hand tackle straighten it out for us. The ball is dead on a punt when the defensive team gains possession. It is first and ten, Atlanta. So make it five block punts on the year. Yeah, he said the ball is dead when the defense uh, gets possession of it. I guess possession here is when the ball is blocked by Tippins. It looks like number 52. Or Brian Jordan, uh, 40, one of the two of them blocked it. And here you see Johnson downfield just makes the reception of the ball. It actually got across the line of scrimmage. Falcons with their fourth block punt. Wagner suffering his fifth. And Atlanta with a break at the Browns 35. Inside, draw play to Rozier. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Uh, and what's happening now for the Falcons is another key opportunity to take the ball and might be uh, wasted away. Remember before, early in the game, when uh, Deion Sanders gets the pass interception, they wasted that opportunity. And now, don't struggle here and lose another opportunity. you got to take it in. Still third quarter with 5.45 to go, but you're absolutely right, Dan. The Falcons who have struggled on offense ever since Chris Miller broke his collarbone have got to do something with this possession you would think to have a chance to fight their way back in they trail by 10 from the red gun four wide receiver offense Hugh Millett across the middle to Thomas 
to the 24. That's an Atlanta first down. Tony Blaylock made the hit. UML is getting a little time to step up in there and deliver the football, and that's making a lot of difference. He's also throwing a ball with a lot of speed and velocity. Watch how he steps up in here and finds his receiver downfield. Also, watch the kind of motion he puts on that ball. This thing is popping out of there very nicely. Millen, the fifth quarterback taken in the 1986 draft. Third round draft choice against a heavy blitz by the Browns here. Look out. Stephen Braggs and Anthony Pleasant made a Hugh Millen sandwich over there. That was a club sandwich. Watch here as Millen tries to roll out to his left. You're going to see the pressure coming from the backside. That's that backside defensive end. And Braggs, 36, slips up in on the blitz and just makes a beeline to Millen. Excellent pursuit angle that time by Stephen Braggs. Browns had only 20 sacks coming into this game. They've got four today. Second and 14. In trouble again is Millen. Michael Dean in there and helping out on the stop along with Burnett. Perry and Burnett, Clay Matthews all there. And it'll be third down and long for Atlanta. Brad, when we talk to Michael Dean Perry, number 92, who gets in here on the sack, we, we asked him about getting double team. You see the double team with Dukes and the guard both on him now. He said what that does is that frees up the other guy so they get one-on-one -on -one coverage, and it allows them to get the pressure on the quarterback. And that's exactly what happened in that opportunity. Five sacks on the day for the Browns now, turning up the heat. Perry's had a big afternoon. That's two and a half for him on the day. Third and 16 for Atlanta. Millen going deep. Sean Collins either broke pattern or just pulled up down there. And the closest man was Raymond Claiborne. Yeah, I was going to say he had Raymond Claiborne open in the corner. <laughs> so Greg Davis will come out. And he's going to attempt a field goal of about 47 yards. Davis has Atlanta's only points of the day, and he is 19 out of 27 on the season. I tell you what, if he hits this one, he's going to earn it, because you and I spent some time on that end of the field. It's not a great spot for a kicker. The wind is really swirling around down in the bowl part of the stadium. Davis from 47 yards. Kick is no good. The snap was low. And the Falcons did well just to get that thing spotted. So it is still 13-3 Browns. Falcons quarterback Hugh Millen talking with quarterback coach Tom Rossley. And Tom Rossley will become the new head coach down at SMU. Congratulations to him. But a guy who's looking for a head coach now is Art Modell, the owner of the Cleveland Browns. And there have been a lot of names. We've talked about some of them earlier in the broadcast. He told me if I wanted to throw my name into the my, <laughs> my name into the ring, go ahead. No, you can't do head. that. <laughs> I'd be lost without you. First down for the Browns. Their own 30-yard line. Ozar to Metcalf. Metcalf dances out for about seven. Jordan and Rady. And on the stop. I tell you what, Tony Jones, number 66, came out on the quick screen. He's a big uh, right tackle for Cleveland. And what he did is watch him grow out. Watch here, watch him on the, as he comes out on the block. He grabs Bobby Butler and just kind of yanks him around. Now, Bobby tries to get in on the stop right here. Now, watch Jones. Boom, he hits him right there. Then he just grabs the back of the jersey and almost pulls him over to the sideline. He knew it was his sideline. Inside is Derek Gaynor. And Gaynor quickly out to the 44-yard line. Scott Case and Brian Jordan made the hit. And once again, another nice block by Tony Jones backside. On the backside of a play, that is away from where the play is supposed to go. If you seal off the backside, it allows your back to cut back over there. And that's what happened on that situation. First down for the Browns. They lead 13-3 with 2.19 to go in the third quarter. Flags down. 
was a strange place to stop that play unless I heard the whistle late. Now we have a little fight going on between Rick Bryan and Tony Jones. That's the old face mask grabber. Yeah, yeah. Tony Jones has got the trifecta going. He's got good blocks. He's got holding. And now he's got fights. No flags yet. I don't think other than the original flag that flew before that altercation occurred. And they get everybody separated. Now let's find out what the penalty was about to start with. False start. Offense. Number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Greg Recrozzi, the right guard. Yeah, what happens is the guy next to you jumps off, and then your man pins you in the head. <laughs> Doesn't help if you blame the guy next to you either, right? <laughs> he and Mike Babb have a little discussion there, the center. First and 15 for the Browns. Blitz coming on Kozar. And he sidearms it out to the 43-yard line of Ozzie Newsom. And we go from that play to Greg Gumbel in New York. Greg? Well, Brad, at Dallas, what a show Emmett Smith is putting on. Watch this touchdown run from six yards out. He slips and goes down, but not one of the Phoenix Cardinals touches him. He pops back up, pulls his way into the end zone, fourth touchdown of the day, and the Cowboys all over the Phoenix Cardinals, 34-3 in the fourth, Brad. All right, Greg, and the Cowboys will be a 500 club when that one's over. They'll be 7-7 seven and, seven and still very much in the playoff picture. Nice turnaround for them after last year. Mm -hmm. Second and 10 for Cleveland. And it's on 44. Bernie Kozar across the middle of Reggie Langhorn. Up to the 49-yard line. Bobby Butler made the hit. Well, I tell you one thing. Bernie Kozar is doing an excellent job reading the blitz and getting rid of the football so far, though. Just dumping the ball off. He's going to take some bumps. He always has in his career here at Cleveland, but uh, does a nice job of just getting rid of the football and getting it to the hot receiver. Watch him dump it off. He sees the blitz coming in his face. Tippins 52 and Connor 56 and just gets it out of there. Bernie had been sacked 35 times coming into this one. They figured he'd been hit 47 other times after letting go of the ball, much like that occasion. But he stands in there tough, and he's got a third down and five here. Falcons may blitz again. Here they come. That time it pays off. Incomplete. Langhorn out there working on Deion Sanders. And Andre Bruce with good pressure that time. Bernie Kozar has to shake off another hit. There's a look at what has happened to him this year. That's, and that's about 25% of his passes in the year. Yeah, that's a whole lot of getting knocked around out there. Got to protect your quarterback better than that. That's the key. He's a franchise type quarterback, but he's got to have time to throw. First punt was partially blocked. This one, a nice kick by Wagner. Might be too nice. It is. Touchback. 51 yarder that time. But the Atlanta offense will have it at the 20 yard line. 12 seconds left in the quarter, and Cleveland maintains a 10 point lead. Here's Hugh Millen, who's taken over for Scott Campbell. Campbell was only three out of nine on the day, and Millen's only one for five. You can't be. Four for 14 for 51 yards passing, Dan, and try to win in this league, huh? No, and, you know, we talked to, to Scott uh, yesterday out here on the practice field when we were, they were having practice, and he just looked like he was a little down, and Jerry Glanville told us, he said he didn't see that spark in his eye that you would hope to see when a guy gets a chance to play, and he didn't know if he was kind of in a fog last week or what, but obviously he didn't have the spark again today. What's amazing, the Falcons come in as the fourth-ranked passing team in the entire league, and they've got 51 yards to show for it today. They go back to the ground game. Rozier picks up a couple before he's put down, and it's just about going to wind down quarter number three. So the Browns have the lead at the end of the third quarter. The score, the Browns 13, the Falcons 3. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Kevin Mack, part of the reason the Browns lead by 10 as we enter the fourth and final quarter. Here at Cleveland Stadium, Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggets with you on a cool December day. 
Mack over in the sideline apparently having a little problem with his arm, but he's, they're just resting him right now. 71 yards rushing on the day. But if you look at his right elbow, it's really swelled up. It looks like a bursa sack problem there. He may have just hit it on the hard turf. Falcons have a second and nine to start the fourth quarter. Play fake. Millen rolls and got it. No, incomplete. Andre Risen. Risen was wide open and forgot to take the ball along. Let's get an update on the Buccaneers and the Vikings. We go back to Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Brad, Minnesota trying to get back into this game from a yard out. Herschel Walker will bull his way into the end zone, but the Vikings missed the extra point. It's now 26-13 Tampa Bay, start of the fourth quarter. Brad and Dan? It's the only place the Vikings have been able to win outdoors in the last couple of years. They have had a horrible outdoor record. And the reason why the temperature is usually about the same as the dome. That's right. Millen? On third down, this time he got it to Ryzen and he got the first down. Andre Ryzen, we're going to call him the music man from now on. He's got a group embrace and he says that uh, they're getting ready to, to publish something and uh, he's pretty excited about that. But he would love right now to catch about uh, eight or nine footballs and maybe move up in that, uh, in that top echelon of Atlanta wide receivers. It's his first catch of the day. Do you believe that? On the slant pattern there, Millen again taking the time and stepping up and delivering the ball. Rising second only to Jerry Rice coming into this game. And that's his first catch of the day, and it took until the fourth quarter for the Falcons to get him the ball. From the red gun, four wide out set. Short in the middle, flags are down. Yeah, there's a lot of movement before the ball was snapped. Was set to be a middle screen for Tracy Johnson. Brad, you mentioned something I think that is essential. Uh, when we talked about weapons for Cleveland, uh, and the, the call is against Atlanta. We talked about weapons for Cleveland. The same thing holds true for Atlanta. You know, Andre Risen is one of your key weapons, and you've got to use him. You've got to get him involved in every game plan that you've got. He's a guy that can put points up on the board. Came in with 71 catches. And only Gary Clark and Al Toon ever hit 100 catches Offense. faster in their Number NFL career. So he Hitley is, is without a doubt, one of the rising stars of the NFL, if you will. He and said his mom was a little upset at the article that uh, appeared in, in sports. Oh, he was upset. His mother really Second liked it. Down. She's probably his best press agent. <laughs> Grew up, said he wanted to play for the Cleveland Browns. His yeah. family, he's got about 30 people here at the game today. Of course, played at Michigan State. Said he always wanted to play for the Browns. We were kind of hoping they would have drafted him a couple of years ago. Here comes a blitz on Millen. In trouble, flag down again. Pass incomplete. Marker down to the line of scrimmage. And another motion call against Atlanta. This is just bad football when you keep making mistakes. Illegal like that. motion. Offense number 85. Penley is declined. Third down. Just concentration. You've got to concentrate out there. You can't let those kinds of penalties keep dogging you. Third down, 10. Don't forget the next Falcon Sunday 32. on CBS. We've got a doubleheader for you. The Cowboys and the Eagles, the Rams and the Falcons in game one, and then the 49ers and Saints doing battle in game two. It all starts with the last word before kickoff. The NFL today. That's a doubleheader next Sunday on CBS Sports. Third and long for Millen. Rob Burnett's got him, and that's the sixth sack of the day for Cleveland. He just did the uh, the uh, nest tee plunge there. Did you see him? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I like these two young uh, defensive ends for Cleveland. And Burnett is a really fine pass rusher. That time he was working against Chris Hinton and. One of the things that happens when you change up quarterbacks is offensive linemen use, lose some of that uh, where they are out on the field. Watch here as Rob Burnett, number 90, gets the pressure on. You see right there, Hinton looks like he's in pretty good shape. He tries to take him back, but Pleasant just jumps right back up underneath and gets the sack. Full hag to punt. Nice kick backs up Brian Brennan inside the 30. And Brennan swarmed under at the 36-yard line. Mike Pringle got down there on the special teams after a 45-yard kick. And we have 13 minutes, 26 seconds to play. Cleveland Brown still with a 10-point lead. This game summary is sponsored by Levi's 505, 506, and 540 Jeans. 
Well, the Browns with three times the offense the Falcons have had today. A couple of field goals by Carrick. Kevin Mack, 71 yards and a five-yard touchdown plunge. And the Cleveland defense, they've been having trouble getting pressure on the quarterback. Not today, Dan. The six sacks on the day, and that's, again, a reason why the offense has been so successful because the, the defense of Cleveland has been getting the football for their offense. 13-26 to play. The Browns take over at their own 36. to the line of scrimmage and that's about it Kevin Mack has seen I think only one play since and here he comes I was just gonna say <laughs> he was up around 72 yards had one carry that he lost a yard and hadn't been back in here he comes he heard you he was reading your mind <laughs> it's been a long time for the Browns to have somebody get a hundred yards he's headed in that direction there's how far you have to go back and he's the last guy to do it Brown shift to an eye with Metcalf in motion. Kozar. Across the middle. Oh, what a hit put on, but Ozzie Newsom holds on. Looks like uh, Ozzie's down there having a little conversation with Robert Lyles. Watch him coming right across and cutting across the middle. Looked like a little delay pattern. Just uh, bump up a little bit, get right down there, get in the middle. Nestled down in there between the linebackers, and boy, he got jammed in there. Ozzie's going to come out after that reception. Ozzie said, hey, I'm heading to the Hall of Fame. Don't be hitting me like that in the last <laughs> game. His fourth catch of the afternoon. Bernie Kozar says, this guy epitomizes what an NFL player is all about. And I said to Bernie, would you like to get him a touchdown? He said, I want to get him as involved as I can. What a great career he's had. Class guy, too. Third down. Kozar, and down he goes. Connor is there. So is Lyles. The two outside linebackers converge on Bernie Kozar. And even Tim Green, number 99, got in there. Good pressure. Comes from both sides outside by the linebackers. Here you see Connor, 56, right in the middle of your screen. You see Lyles. Tiffin's in there as well. Both of them getting in there and squeezing the quarterback. Kozar has nowhere to go. Why a pass on third down and one with a 10-point lead? I don't well, get it. Every now and then you think you can take advantage of something they're doing defensively. Wagner's had one block today. Gets this one off. Deion Sanders at the 25. Down he goes. Nice coverage by the Browns. 11.44 to go in the ball game. Browns by 10. The tackle is made by... CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Canon, a world leader in cameras and business equipment. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, no when to say when. Back in balmy Cleveland, 13 to 3 with 11.44 to go. Looks like it's nice and toasty in that shot of the flats. Not quite that warm here today, though, for the folks who are all bundled up. Hey, this is AFC Central Division weather, though. Cold, dreary, you know, overcast. That's the way it's supposed to be late in the season. Hugh Millett got it complete. George Thomas steps out of bounds. Millen three out of nine on the afternoon. And that is the exact stat that Scott Campbell left with. So two Falcon quarterbacks have matched the statistics today. Second down about five coming up. Atlanta's red gun offense. He's had a few empty chambers today for Jerry Glanville. Again, the four wideouts as Millen rolls in and out of the hands of Michael Haynes. There have been a few of those occasions today, too. Don't put all the blame on the Falcon quarterbacks. Well, no, because that one looked like it had maybe a rope on it or a rubber band would just pop right back out. Michael Haynes had an opportunity to make the play there and just didn't do it. Cleveland Stadium where the Browns are hoping to win their final game of the season home game of the season that is and they've got the 10 point advantage with 11 14 to play with Dan Jiggets I'm Brad Nessler Jamie Dukes of Falcon Center just limped off he's missed one play all season he's about to miss his second play of the year Mike Ruther in at the center spot 
Third and three. Keep it on the ground to Tracy Johnson. First down for the Falcons out to the 44-yard line. I tell you what, is another former Oiler. What happened, Brad, though, is if you looked at the defense, watch, there are no linebackers, see, in the heart of the defense. So you turn around and say, even if you got a pass play call, you check it off and hand off the football and just let your running back get up through there, get up through the offensive line, and you got the first down. Longest run of the day for the Falcons. Do you believe that? That's not good news. Remember, the Falcons are only 10 points down. They get a touchdown, and we've got a tight game. But they've got to move it down the field. 10-39 to play. Millen. Deep ball, incomplete. Michael Haynes, the intended receiver. Haynes with a lot of speed. Didn't pay off that time. Emmett Smith has been the Dallas offense today. Tampa Bay trying to spoil the Vikings playoff chances. Houston surprising Kansas City. Warren yes. Moon's got a couple more touchdown passes there. Miami over Seattle. Seattle's still in the playoff line as of today. Indianapolis over the Jets. That falls into the who cares category as well. 13-3 <laughs> here. Falcons need to get some offense going in a hurry as we approach the 10-minute mark remaining. <laughs> Millen incomplete. <laughs> Pass intended for George Thomas again. Double team down there by Thane Gash. And Tony Blaylock. Well, see, the problem that Hugh Miller is having is if you're going to get to the corner, if you're going to roll out, either you're going to roll out behind your tackle or you're going to roll all the way out to the sideline. And right now, he's kind of falling in between, and I think it's giving his offensive line a tough read because they're trying to step up on that on that rollout side and play it tough, but yet and still, he's just kind of dangling back there. So establish something, either go all the way out or pull up to let your people know where you're going to be. He's not doing himself any favors the way he's doing it. He's just asking to get hit out there. Dukes is back at center. He'll snap it to Millen in the shotgun. This time he has plenty of time. Deep ball, and it is incomplete. Almost caught by Collins, then almost intercepted by Felix Wright. That's where soccer, we'd call it a header, because watch this pass <laughs> bounces off the top of one of the defensive backs down here for Cleveland. It's Raymond Claiborne. Watch Claiborne right off the top of his helmet, almost intercepted, and then almost uh, picked off again by Atlanta. Claiborne has a pass defended. That goes in the category. You can thank his helmet. Full Hag has been a busy punter. Brian running back at about the 15 for the Browns. High lazy kick. Brennan will call for the fair catch and take it Brennan. at the 18-yard line. 10 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the ball game. Cleveland Browns 13-3 on Atlanta. One dentist says those fillings in your mouth could cause chronic diseases that would make a toothache seem like a pleasure. The head of the ADA says nonsense. It isn't so, is it? You watch 60 Minutes tonight and find out. That's followed by murder, she wrote. And Sinatra's 75, the best is yet to come for blue eyes. That's all tonight on CBS. Chairman of the board, turn 75. Looks like an exciting program. They're going to have some great I wasn't invited on. to his party, were you? <laughs> he knew we had to do the game. Oh, I fun. see. Browns with a 10-point lead in the first down. Kevin Mack. Bouncing up for a couple of yards. John Rady, number 59, was a guided missile on that play and hit Kevin Mack in the backfield, and that really slowed him down. Tony Casillas in there on the stop as well from his nose tackle spot. There's John Rady, the man they call Radar. Not the biggest, not the fastest, but he will hit you <laughs> when he gets a chance. We're talking to Tony Casillas about his wife, which is now a psychiatrist. Says it's really strange you come back to the house and it's filled with uh, her friends, or the other psychiatrist. I said, do they analyze you? Would you sit down? <laughs> he said, doesn't every wife analyze the husband? <laughs> Second and eight. Pitch to Metcalf. Sports through to the 28-yard line. About a yard short of the first down to the pier. Scott Case there to make the tackle. The one thing you want to look for with Eric Metcalf is watch his explosion as he sees the hole. That's the thing, that acceleration that a running back has once he visualizes the hole right there. You see him put on that extra little burst, and that gets him through and gets him the positive yardage. 
So I said he's one of those weapons that you've got to use. You've got to get the ball in his hands. The son of Terry Metcalf, who I had the opportunity to play against. Hard to believe you're looking at his son now. You were real lucky you played offense. You didn't have to try yeah. to catch Terry Metcalf. You know that. <laughs> There's the scoring by quarters. None here in the fourth, none in the first, but the middle belonged to Cleveland. And they're that much short of the first down. 16 points scored in the game. You can't even buy a stamp with that, can you? Talked about mailing it in. <laughs> Dick Antak had a folded envelope right there with a stamp on it to try to see how close they were. And close enough. First down for the Browns. I thought they were a bit shy, but they weren't. So now the Browns would just like to eat some clock, and we're under nine minutes to play. They lead by ten. Falcons need a turnover or something to swing this game back and give them a chance. Kozar just got rid of it before Lyles leveled him, and now a flag down. And apparently they'll call roughing the pat. No intentional grounding. That's why Kozar's mad. Wait a minute now. Eric Metcalf is out over on that side. How can that call be made? That's a terrible call. Eric Metcalf clearly out on that side. That's who Kozar is throwing to. That's a tough call to accept. So they'll walk this one off. It'll be a loss of down. Here's the call. Intentional grounding. Offense. Loss of down. Second down. 21, Eric Metcalf is out there on the corner. You see him out there, and that's who Kozar. As a matter of fact, the ball skips once and gets to his feet. Yeah, he's trying to avoid the sack, but he's also trying to get the ball out to his running back. And Questionable backs, call. Backs it up to the 17-yard line. for Kozar. Over the middle. Gainer broke one tackle. Now heads for the sideline. And the first year back out of Florida A&M does a nice job to get out close to the first down. Ken Tippins finally ran him down. Talked about the Cleveland offensively going to the, the weapon system here. And Gainer's another one of those weapons out of the backfield. Nice reception there over the middle. Catches the linebackers playing soft and just simply beats all of them over to that sideline. So he makes it a manageable third and three coming up. It would have been third down and long yardage, but Gaynor got 19 yards. From the 36, third down and three. Falcons show blitz, and here they come with it. Langhorn, first down. Kozar put it right on the money. Blitz is coming. Deion Sanders man-to-man -man coverage against Langhorn, and you expect Deion, the number one, to get lay hands on Langhorn when he tries to escape off the line of scrimmage. Jam him up. Hope that your linebackers can get there in time. Watch Sanders down at the bottom of your screen. He's number 21. Takes the inside away and then loses the position because Langhorn gives him the shake. Fourth catch of the day for Reggie Langhorn for 62 yards. That one in front of Deion Sanders, and the Browns keep the drive going, keep the clock running as it works its way to the seven-minute mark. Pretty efficient day for Bernie Kozar. Gainer. Derek Gainer maybe got a yard. That's about it. Tippins and Jordan and Green all there to meet him. Smallest non-strike crowd since... 84, only 46,000. This place holds almost 81. Well, a little over 80, I should say, and normally it is packed. There's been a lot of, you know, going back and forth in terms of community involvement with the team in the community and vice versa, but uh, this has been a tough year for the Cleveland Browns. And I know one thing, though, there's some fans that always come here, and those are the people down in the pound. That's right. That's the one end of the stadium that is packed. They don't need any quiche down there. <laughs> they don't even know what it is. <laughs> The Browns really get involved with the community, too, as you see there. 
especially here at Christmas time. So much going on during this holiday season, and the Browns have been out in the community. Matter of fact, the wives today, I think, are, are uh, taking in food for the needy right. uh, here at the stadium. They've got a second down for the Browns at their own 46 yard line coming up here in a moment. Jerry Glanville's Falcons with only three points today. Trying to get his troops into it here. They still have a chance, but something's got to turn in a hurry for them. They come with a pressure again on Kozar. He got it again to Langhorn. Kozar's pass. Butler put him down, but the completion out to the 46-yard line. Elsewhere around the league today, the Cowboys on their way to a win, and that would eliminate the Rams and the Lions if the Cowboys hold on to win. Warren Moon a couple of touchdown passes a tough game there between the Oilers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs had a chance to make sure guarantee themselves a spot and capture the uh, AFC West. Gary Anderson won the battle of the Andersons over Morton in that Pittsburgh New Orleans that was all done with the field goals today. Here the Browns have third and two Falcons simply have to stop them and try to get this football back. Gainer will not get it. So the Falcons defense does their job. Scott Case, Robert Lyles, Brady, Green, they're all there. And Wagner will have to punt it. Now, if I'm the Falcons special teams, Dan, I do one of two things. I put all the heat on number 15 and try to block it, or I put the return on and try to give number 21, Deion Sanders, a chance to do something with it. I you can't you, be in between. No, I think you accomplish both if you put the heat on him, though, because either you're going to block it or he's going to kick it away and kick it into the end zone so you get it back on the 20-yard line. So I think the key thing here is to put some pressure on Brian Wagner. We've got a timeout right here, and while we have that, we've got time to tell you that coming up next week, it's the Lions and the Packers. Special time noon Eastern to get things going. The NFL today will also have the NFL's greatest plays in history. And there are some classics in there you're going to enjoy. So that's next Saturday right here on CBS Sports. I can guarantee you that none of those plays will be from today's game. I don't think so. That's a really hey, well, safe assumption. We've had some, some, some nice running, though, by Kevin Mack of the Cleveland Browns. Though. That's been exceptional about this game and offensively for uh, Cleveland. The highlight for the Falcons is probably Deion Sanders one handed interception in the first half in which uh, the Falcons unfortunately for them were unable to to uh, capitalize on and they blocked a punt as well and couldn't do anything with that. So now they're going to get a chance to get it back offensively with five and a half minutes or so to go. There's Deion Sanders back as the Falcons punt return man. He could very well go to the Pro Bowl as a special teams guy this year as a return man. He has one 79 yard touchdown return off a of punt this year. Boy would he love to get one here to get his team back into it. See all the shifting going on on the front wall. Time. They ran out on the clock. So they'll back. Brian Wagner up. Delay. Offense. And the line of scrimmage moves back into Cleveland territory. In a moment. Unless the Falcons choose to decline this. Delay. Offense number 15. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. It's the 11th penalty against the Browns today. Now we're set to do it again. No return the first time he handled it. Dion's going to have to call for a fair catch at the 13 yard line. And it was kind of an in betweener. They sent a few people rushing, but didn't give Sanders any help on the return. So a 41 yard punt and no return. And. The Falcon offense will have to do it starting at their own 14 yard line. Next Sunday, don't forget we've got an NFL doubleheader for you on CBS Sports. Starting things off, the Cowboys right in the thick of things in the playoffs against the Eagles. Dan and I will be in Atlanta for the Rams and the Falcons. And then the Saints and the world champions have at it in game two 
And it all starts with the last word before kickoff, the NFL today, next week, right here on CBS Sports. Looks like it's going to be a long plane ride back to Atlanta for the Falcons again. It'll be their 18th straight road loss unless they can turn things around in the next five and a half minutes. Millen got it out complete to Andre Risen. Risen second only to Jerry Rice in NFL receiving coming into this game. He really is an exceptional talent that, uh, as we said earlier, the Falcons really have to take full advantage of. Coordinating producers of the NFL on CBS, Charles H. Milton III and Ed Gorin. Today's telecast Second produced by George Barris and directed by Richard Drake. NFL was produced by Eric Mann and directed by Duke Strzok. Senior producer of CBS Sports is David Winter and the executive producer of CBS Sports, Ted Shaker. Mike Rozier on second down as the first down and quite a bit more. Bounces his way out to about the 38-yard line. The Falcons, if they can't come up with a win, will have lost their 18th straight on the road. And there's where they would stand in the, a dubious honor that they would like to forget. Yeah, but maybe the good news is look at the team that's behind them, San Francisco. That's right. Millen in trouble. Heads to the sideline, gets what he can, gets out of bounds, run out by Mike Johnson. Do you believe this? The Falcons, if they lose this, their losing streak will be the equivalent of the 49ers winning streak on the road? 49ers don't lose on the road, and the Falcons have had all kinds of trouble trying to win on the road. Last time the Falcons beat somebody on the road was the Raiders back in 88. That was in November of 88, so it's been a long dry spell. Miami over Seattle. As the finals start to roll in. Second and ten. Millen got it to rise and no. They're going to say he is out of bounds on that catch. Had a chance to talk with Andre Bruce uh, yesterday at practice, and you really feel for a young guy like him because you think that maybe sometimes he just doesn't grasp how important it is for him to, to concentrate and become a part of this team and become a professional. And I think he's starting to come around and understand that now. When you got as much talent as he does, and you find yourself sitting on the sidelines a great deal, uh, he's got one tackle today. That was the open field stop of Metcalf, but the overall number one draft choice in the whole league you want with more than one tackle. He was number one pick three years ago. There's Marcus Cotton, who played in Atlanta up until a couple of weeks ago, and he was waived, picked up by the Browns. Millen, deep middle. Risen made a nice catch, and he's loose. Andre Risen to the 21 yard line. Falcons will hustle it up. Four minutes and 14 seconds to go, a 39-yard pass play. Falcons will line it up at the Browns 21. They trail by 10. Millen looks right. Now he's going to scramble and goes down. He lost a yard. That'll be considered a sack for the Browns. They're seventh of the day. Mike Johnson's there. I think, it, again, there should be another category for sacks, and that is, those are cheap sacks. Right. And I think that would definitely fall into that category. Anything with a quarterback holding it, losing yardage behind the line of scrimmage, which that was by about a yard. There's also good coverage by the Browns. Millen. Outside and 10 for Thomas. Broken up by Tony Blaylock. Well, this is an opportunity for the Falcons, Dan. They're down yeah. close. Hey, and they're working short. And like at that pass there, had it been caught by Thomas, it still would have been a gain of only about two or three yards. Uh, you would think that maybe you want to work a little bit deeper or work to the end zone more. Third and 11 coming up. Here's what the Browns have done pressure-wise. They're up to 28 sacks on the season. They had only 20 coming in, and they have eight on the day. Well, uh, in order to get back to last year, would they have to average uh, 14, 14 a, game. a game to get back to last year's numbers? Well, the Falcons probably will take two cracks to pick up this 11 yards if needed. Millen, incomplete. Ryzen got a hand on it. And now you got to think they're going to go on fourth down and 11, although they are bringing out the field goal unit. Once again, though, the patterns are short patterns. They're not going deep and stretching the defense, trying to get it up underneath. 
Well, with 3.33 to go, the Falcons are going to bring out the field goal unit and try to cut this game down to a touchdown. They have only one timeout remaining, I believe, but yet they must feel they can stop the Browns and try to get it back with a chance to win at the end. 39-yard field goal attempt. They've got a half. Kick is no good. One of those days. Davis has missed a couple. And how does a coach feel when you miss a chance to cut the lead to seven? I think that pretty much tells the story of the day. Don't forget, we've got a lot coming up after this one. As NFL Today postgame show, Greg and Terry will have scores and highlights from all the other games, latest playoff information as well. That's all coming up after this one. Greg Davis, who played his high school ball in Atlanta at Lakeside High School, just missed a field goal that would have put the Falcons back within striking distance. Now it appears they're going to need a miracle to win this thing. Metcalf outside. Tippin saved a touchdown. Boy, he's quick. Yeah, if you've ever driven a car with a turbo, you know how the turbo <laughs> takes a while to get warmed up. Well, that's what kind of happens with Eric Metcalf when he hits the corner. You can see when the turbo kicks in, and when he just now when he turns up field, that's when the turbo goes on. And you see that step now. That's when you know he's gone. You're in trouble. Luckily for Atlanta, Tippins is back there, number 52, to make the stop. Cleveland Stadium where the Browns lead and the Indians have played for so many years that's going to change though the new gateway facility going up in the years to come Darian Connor stops Metcalf that time right I really play I really like Connor as a, a linebacker he's a big outside linebacker and a, a guy that's a difference maker on defense I think for the Falcons Jerry Glanville calls Darian Connor a borderline train killer <laughs> just just what you want to be called huh? And that's last time out. Falcons cannot stop it again. So really all the Browns needs about a first down and of course a two minute warning will stop it one more time for Atlanta. You think how important the victory is for both of these teams that would, would be to have that kind of victory to emotionally get yourself back up off the ground and certainly when the Falcons came Scott Case told us we were talking to him before the game said we really need a win. Yeah. It's been Cleveland's day so far. So the thing that happens is if you're always losing games, they're close ones like the Falcons have lost games and they really could have won them, then you start to doubt the program and doubt what you're doing. They may be getting to that phase. Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack. Going on still with three minutes to go, huh? A lot of plastic popping down there. <laughs> Kevin Max had an excellent day. Take a look at the NFC playoff picture right now. Redskins a winner yesterday. That clinched a berth for Washington. Dallas on their way to go seven and seven. Minnesota was trailing by 13 to Tampa Bay the last time we looked. Third down at 10. Kozar pitches it to Mack. A little option play that time. He didn't get the first down, but he got it out to the 44-yard line. John Rady made the tackle. And the clock will wind down to two minutes now before the Browns will have to give it back to the Atlanta offense. So the Falcons will indeed get the ball back offensively, but they'll have only two minutes to work. Less than two minutes, actually. And no timeouts left, either. Down to the two-minute warning. Cleveland leads by 10. Brad Nessler and Dan Jiggins at Cleveland Stadium where the Browns lead by 10, and they've got to give it back to the Atlanta offense. They'll punt it away. Brian Wagner said, hey, what's the deal? Let's go. Let's kick it. It's getting cold out here. 
He's had one block today. Deion Sanders has had virtually no opportunity at return today thanks to the Browns special teams. They've done a nice job on it. Again, we'll find out if the Falcons go after the punter or try to set up Dion for the return. It appears they've got the return on this time. Indeed, they do. Nice kick by Wagner. Sanders from the 14. Reverses his field. He's got a long way to go to try to find some room. Flags down as well. That ends up being about a two-yard return, and we might have a penalty on it to boot. Deion Sanders tried to create something that time, got a two-yard return, ran about 80 yards to get it, and an illegal block on Atlanta on top of that. Brad, I'm looking at Art Modell, the owner of the uh, Cleveland Browns, and I think he's breathing a big sigh of relief because this club is finally looking like they might win one here. Been a long, dry stretch for them. Cowboys win. So they're still in the playoff picture, and the Rams and Lions have been eliminated with that Dallas win. Warren Moon, we understand, over 525 yards passing in that game, second best in NFL history, and I think if uh, my memory serves me, Norm Van Brock is number block. one on the list. Prior to possession... By number 56, we will penalize half the distance from the spot where possession was gained. First down. I want to go back to Warren Moon. Forget about this one right here. 29 yards Warren Moon needs to break Norm Van Brocklin's record set in 1951 of 554 yards passing. And, of course, the Dutchman, a former coach with the Falcons, I had an opportunity to get to know him a little bit before he passed away. Quite a guy. Fiery competitor. And that's a stat you thought might live forever. Pass caught by Andre Risen. Got it out to the 27-yard line of first down. The Falcons will hustle it up. Remember, they're out of timeouts. 18-yard pickup that time. We're down to a minute 20. Millen. Throws outside to Ryzen and Andre gets what he can and might have gotten another first down. He did. He just went airborne and skipped his feet across the 38-yard line for the first down. Stay tuned for the NFL Today postgame show. Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw will have all the scores and highlights and latest playoff information from around the league. That's coming up after our game here in Cleveland. Scott Campbell started today for Atlanta there in the jacket. Was three out of nine and was replaced by Hugh Millen. It was put together a few yards here in the fourth quarter. We're down to the final minute and 13 of that gentleman's brilliant tight end career for the Browns as far as home games are concerned. The Falcons moving it down the field have worked it to the midfield stripe with 108 to go. If you go back to Ozzie Newsom, I hope the fan, football fans around the country appreciate what the, that young man has meant to the, the game of professional football and particularly to the position of tight end. Clay Matthews may well be playing his last game at home as a Cleveland Brown. He says that he may want to head west, and uh, that's a development that will probably happen during the offseason, whether or not he's back. Several times a pro bowler, Clay Matthews. Ozzie Newsom, same story, fourth all-time receiver in NFL history. Millen buys some time and throws wide open to George Thomas this time. He's going to back down to the 21-yard line, and the Falcons will have to bring it up. They're out of timeouts. Got to hustle up to the line. We're under 50 seconds. Pickup of 28 yards. Boy, at this pace, the Falcons aren't going to give any more plays off if they don't hurry. Millen, middle, got it to Risen, but again, in the middle of the field with no timeouts. <laughs> yeah, and he's getting trapped down below. That ought to be a penalty after a while. You know, you got to stop doing that. It looks like Andre is laying down now. Something is wrong with him on that play. He got injured. His sixth catch of the day. The fans boo, thinking that Ryzen is feigning an injury to no, try he to did. stop the clock. You he, can't do that anymore in the NFL. And anyway. he doesn't. He didn't have to do it because he's a guy that can get it in the end zone. He can make a difference. Going across the middle of the area where everybody tells you it's so tough to catch the football and get the kind of contact that you're going to. He tries to avoid right there and then gets bounced on as he's on the ground. 
Thane Gash, one of the guys that hit him, and Andre Risen down. This guy's one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League. Jerry Ray, the Falcons trainer, and John Garrett, their team physician over Andre Risen. There's another peek at him. I believe he gets clipped down low by the knee right there as he makes, makes his move right there. And then Gash lands on top of him as well. Another look at it. Gets hit low. He gets landed on by Gash right there. You see that leg got folded up right up on top of him. And I believe that's the one that the training staff is looking at. Meanwhile, while Andre Risen is down, the Falcons will lose 10 more seconds off the clock due to the fact they're out of timeouts. They have an injured player that indeed is obviously injured. I, I think there's uh, no doubt about that. And they're explaining that situation right now to Jerry Glanville. So I think instead of 23 seconds, we'll have 13 seconds left in the game. At some point, we'll get an official word. I think that's how it's going to go. It's interesting when we're talking to Andre, though. He said that when he read a uh, scouting report that said he was the 28th best wide receiver in the draft when he came out he said he couldn't believe it and certainly I don't think now anybody else ever thought that uh, we'll ever think again that he's the 28th best maybe of all time <laughs> give him a couple of more years he's had a great year he's up around 77 catches on the season now over 1100 yards you can see rising in a lot of pain as he's holding on to the Falcon trainer they're trying to have something to hold on to the ease of pain a little bit and his mother is here in the stand she came in today for the ball game from uh, Flint Michigan she's going to get an opportunity to visit with him I'm sure she's awfully concerned about the situation right now while we have the injury we look at the wild card race AFC Buffalo wins a game and loses a quarterback yesterday they're atop the heat they Miami say, 11 and 3 after their win they said Kelly may be out of anywhere from uh, two to six weeks they don't know right now Kansas City was losing earlier today. I don't know the outcome of that game. But we'll try to roll it up for you, certainly. Houston is apparently going to move up with the big day that Warren Moon has had. Pittsburgh, a winner on field goals over New Orleans, 9-6 today. And they're bringing out the stretcher for Andre Risen. And boy, what a tough situation for an Atlanta Falcon team that was trying to get in the end zone, trying to somehow fight back into this game in the waning seconds, and obviously trying to end a long, long losing streak on the road and not to lose their top star. And this will be Chris Miller and Andre Risen lost to this team in the past two weeks. And that was the battery that put so many passing yards on the board for Jerry Glanville's team over the course of this season. And now they're, they're two main weapons, one already down after having had surgery, and hopefully it's not a serious injury to Andre Risen. Fred, here's another look at this one. I watch when Andre Risen goes up over the top. Watch Stain Gash land and bend his leg back right there. You see, that's oh. when that leg got flexed back. And I think that that's what the problem is right now with Andre Risen. And we certainly hope that it's nothing serious. Sometimes uh, you just never know with these injuries. And you see them putting him on the board now. We can't guess, but obviously the left leg was uh, bent back badly, as Dan mentioned. Cowboys on Emmett Smith's four touchdowns a big winner today. They just dog Phoenix Tampa Bay did it to the Vikings. It's not over but it's very close. It's not over but it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Moon what a day huh. Mm -hmm. Houston puts uh, Kansas City in a tenuous position now if the Raiders win. Pittsburgh Gary Anderson out kicked Morton Anderson 9 6 the final there and Miami having one of their best years in a long time and Indianapolis a winner over the Jets you might hear the chant in the background going on Ozzy Ozzy for Ozzy Newsom this is a special kind of player Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights they'll have an update on what might be a record breaking performance by Warren Moon today they'll take a look complete playoff picture in both the NFC and AFC and a lot more coming up in our post game show NFL today post game show that's the way it looks when you're three and eleven which is about what the Falcons are going to be here in a, 
a few seconds and uh, obviously some very concerned friends and teammates of number 80 Andre Risen who's being stretchered off Cleveland Stadium surface. We'll try to get a report before we go off but I don't know if we'll have time to be quite honest with you. First down for the Falcons. Clock is running. Now it's stopped at 13. They wound it down to use 10 seconds. To the corner, incomplete, intended for Sean Collins or overthrown. Again, while you saw that clock moving and then stop at 13, remember, the Falcons were out of timeouts. They had an injured player. It was obviously a very serious injury. Well, we don't know if it's serious, but obviously an injury to Andre Risen. So the officials took 10 seconds off the Falcons' clock. And that'll happen anytime, and that happens in a, with Inside two minutes. Two minutes uh, right. So we wanted to clear that up for you. That's why the clock was moving and then stopped at 13. They were winding it down at that point. Falcons maybe have two plays left. Incomplete. Raymond Claiborne broke it up. Intended for Collins. Claiborne down there trying to draw a little inspiration from the pound. And unfortunately for Atlanta and for Andre Rise, and that is him going off on that stretcher. We just hope the best for him. He's having a fine day late in the, in the ball game. They're making a lot of catches for Atlanta. Final play of the game coming up. So the Falcons road losing streak will continue. An eight game skid for the Cleveland Browns is one play away from ending. George Thomas in motion. Hugh Millen for the end zone touchdown Atlanta. Floyd Dixon on the final play gets it in the end zone. Atlanta's only touchdown comes too late. Floyd Dixon with the reception touchdown. You go back to the missed field goal now the Falcons come back and get the touchdown the game will be tied up and we'd be looking at an overtime situation. You go back and look at two missed field goals. Mm -hmm. Maybe they would be winning. Who knows. That's a lot of ifs. Ifs and ands were pots and pans the whole world would be a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg Davis who missed those two field goals we talked about set for the point after. play the game is an extra point by Greg Davis that will give us our official final score and that final score the Cleveland Browns beating the Atlanta Falcons and Jerry Glanville's long losing streak continues final score Cleveland 13 Atlanta 10 our coverage will continue with the NFL today post game show Greg and Terry will bring you up to date on all of today's scores and highlights You're watching the NFL on CBS.